scholarship, the first one ever to handle all the kicking duties for the Blue Hens. Sifford at the five. Runs out of one tackle up over the 20, and that's where the Villanova Wildcats will put it in play. Eric Pearson will be the quarterback. Anthony Calcet and Russ Kingsbury, the backfield, although Sifford should start instead of Calcet at the, at the very beginning. Dolbin and Hunt, the wideouts, and Pat Krebs, the tight end. McCarthy, Weidel, Benziha, Ramirez, and Raz, the people up front, the right side of that offensive line, the veteran part. And Sifford, as we were, we were told earlier, would run the football to the right side, and that, in fact, is what they did. Carl, the true freshman, uh, Craig Johnson, wanted to give him the ball early, get him into the flow of this ball game. 21 carries, 84 yards last week. Schlesser, Ventreska, Hondrew, and Mulhern moving up from linebacker where he was a three-year starter now at defensive end. D'Angelo, Lenz, and McSee, the linebackers, and they are not an experienced bunch there. Underwood and Williams, the corners, Cy and Kenny Bailey are the safeties for Delaware. Second down and eight to go. Pat Krebs in motion from left to right, now set. They give us to Cal set over the right side. And he is met and stopped after a gain of about two. Ralph D'Angelo out of Will William Tennant High School, a redshirt freshman, makes the stop. Tubby Raymond was not happy with his linebacker play last week uh, in their loss to William & Mary. Uh, felt they were making too many tackles behind the line of scrimmage. That time, uh, they attacked the line, uh, and that's what you have to do against this Villanova offense. You've got to get penetration. There you see D'Angelo make a terrific play, filling the hole. Third down and about seven for the Wildcats. Their first possession. We're just underway here at Villanova. Crowd still coming in. Quick drop, Pearson under pressure and put down immediately by Pat Mulhern. So Pat Mulhern, as we suggested at the start, a former linebacker with the sack. It looked like they were looking. Oh, we're going to look at this from the end, and you'll see Mulhern on the right side of the screen coming on the stunt right up the middle. Villanova does not do a good job of picking it up. Mulhern, quick pressure, no chance for Pearson. Frank Venezia to kick it away. The Delaware native kicking for Villanova. Single safety is number three, Pat Williams. It bounces just over midfield. Williams takes it, bobbled it, but covers it at the 40. That's where the fighting blue hands will put it in play. A 41-yard punt, just about nothing on the return, George. You'll see Williams here does a nice job on the after turf. When this ball bounces, if you don't if you don't get on it, this thing could roll 20 or 30 yards downfield. You're really not looking for a return on a punt like that, but you're saving yardage by just getting it and falling down. Junior Keith Lang in the quarterback. There you see the wing tee. The number five is Courtney Batts, the spread end on the reverse. And it looks like he has a Delaware first down. Let's set that lineup for you, that Delaware offensive lineup. Right now, the quarterback is Keith Langan, Darrell Brown, the featured back, Norman Coleman, and Pat Williams, the halfbacks in that full house backfield, Courtney Batts, who just ran it, and hit me the tight end. Compon, Pine, Smith, Trosel, and Archibald up front. First and 10, Delaware. At the Villanova, 48. The fake to Brown. Williams with the ball. Pat Williams on the carry. Gain of about eight. From the end zone here, we'll see Langan coming out. Actually, obviously, you can see Villanova concentrating on Brown. He's the guy that feel they have to stop. Langan comes down, makes a real nice pitch to get the ball outside. That's going to be key, getting the ball outside today for Delaware. Second down, about a yard and a half to go. The Nova defensive line will set for you in a moment. Right now, their job is to stop Delaware, and that's Darrell Brown, and they did not stop him as he gets down just shy of the 35-yard line. One more time, the defense for the Villanova Wildcats, a 3-4 configuration. Curtis Ziegler and Garneri, the people up front, the linebackers. Baker, Frazier, Borowski, and Cobalt, a very active and aggressive bunch, as are the defensive backs. Kyle Helton, Debbie Logan, Chris Hardy, and Curtis Dunaway. 
First down and 10, just at the 35-yard line. Williams, the man in motion. The pitch is to him. And he fumbles the ball, but out of bounds. Just about a yard short of a first down. Pat Williams with the carry. Chris Hardy on the tackle. Carl, you'll see uh, Andy Cobalt kind of gets caught in no man's land here. Uh, is he going to take the, the quarterback or is he going to take the back? You've got to be decisive right there. He kind of goes to the quarterback indecisive. The ball gets outside of Williams with a good gain on the pitch. You've got to be quick and make him deliver that ball quicker so that the, the outside pursuit can catch up there. He kind of got stuck, Cobalt did. Well, there are likely very few surprises in this Delaware offense. This Villanova has seen it, Andy Cobalt, a fifth-year senior, so you've got to make quick decisions and they've got to be the right ones. Langan doesn't make the right one there on a second down play, and he loses a yard, taken down by Tyrone Frazier. Cobol again, the fifth-year senior, a very intense kind of guy, the leader of that defense. Here, takes on the block. This way you got to stand it up and be decisive. There he is, fighting off the block, making the play. Third down and about five to go. Delaware with their first possession. Three and out for Villanova with theirs. Now Delaware driving into Villanova territory. The scissors play inside the give is to Coleman. He's about a yard short. I gotta believe Tubby's gonna go for it with just a yard to go here. I would imagine he, he would go for it. They're moving the ball pretty well. They had some problems last week against William and Mary in the fourth down situations. They did not convert. What's that? Uh, you play? can see Villanova <laughs> on the sideline making adjustments already. That's Mark Ferrani uh, going over some of the, the adjustments they want, want to make. Big situation right here for Villanova. They got to stack it inside. Right now, Delaware is doing a lot of good things. They're giving them all the misdirection, keeping, keeping Villanova very loose on the defensive side of the ball. Fourth and one. This is the seventh play of the drive. They give it to their All-American candidate, Darrell Brown, and he takes it inside the 21st down, Delaware. Carl, we spoke about Darrell in our uh, pregame show. He, he is the kind of guy they have to stop. You'll see Brown right here. This guy is a load. He is not only one of the best players in one double-A, the fullback is in. He's one of the best fullbacks in the country. The pros are all looking at him right now. 6'3", 256 pounds from Landover, Maryland. Right now, Villanova can't stop him. And great speed as well to go along with that big body. That's why he'll likely be a number one draft choice in the NFL this coming spring. Coleman in motion. Langan keeps... Holds on, and Villanova closes down quickly. Cobal leading the charge for Villanova. Andy Cobal played that one perfectly, Carl. There he made his decision. Once he seen the, the, the ride fake to Brown, he knew what he wanted to do. He was decisive on that play. That's what you have to be against this wing tee. You cannot get caught in no man's land. You've got to attack the offense. Second and 12 now for the Blue Hands. Pushed back outside the 20 now. To give to Brown inside, finds a hole over the right side, down to about the 15-yard line. For half the campus tackles him. You would have to assume that uh, Tubby Raymond believes he's in the four-down situation. They're on second 11, just running the fullback Brown right over the middle, picks up five yards, kind of get in that normal situation, third and five, third and six. That's exactly what it is. Third and six. Brown so far, three carries, 17 yards for the Blue Hens. Coleman and Brown having a brief discussion with the official in the backfield. Coleman sets to the right now, goes in motion. He gives to Brown up the middle. And he's got another first down. Devian Logan, the free safety, has to come up and make the stop, but not before Darrell Brown is into the defensive backfield and has another first down. Again, they run the inside trap, and Chris Compton, number 74, comes around and just makes a terrific block to, to free Brown up the middle. This guy is just a load, and you give him any room, he's just going to run over people. Devian Logan certainly can't stand up to the, the wear and tear of Darrell Brown. But the great block there by Chris Compton, number 74, the sophomore, 6'4", 273. Delaware with four first downs in his drive. This is Williams standing up and in the end zone. Touchdown, Delaware. Good block that time by Darrell Brown to create the opening for Pat Williams to dance into the end zone. Well, Darrell Brown uh, got a lot of yards on the ground. There he makes the key block, and you see Williams go in the end zone untouched. A great kickout block by Brown. 
Here from our sideline angle again. Watch number 42 Brown, right side of your screen. There's the kickout block. No one touched. But give the right side of the Delaware offensive line credit. They just blew away the Villanova front four and the linebacker. John Leach, you kept the point after. It's deflected, but good. With the score, Delaware 7, Villanova nothing. 8-11 remaining here in the first quarter. Pat Williams with a five-yard touchdown run, capping off an 11-play drive. All of them rushing plays, 60 yards. Took him almost five minutes. Darrell Brown, Ron, with four rushes for 27 yards in that scoring drive. Well, he was the guy that we talked about. Dan McNeil, the defensive coordinator for Villanova, thought that they had to stop the fullback in the wing tee. On that first drive, they did not stop him. That sounds like trouble for Villanova. Dan's going to have to make some defensive adjustments. All rushes, they would like to force the young quarterback to throw the football the first drive they weren't able to do that. Leach kicking off. That's Kyle Hilton at the five. Had a lane that closed up very quickly as he got over the 20. And that's where Villanova will put it in play over the 20 at about the 23. We'll be back with more from Villanova. The Cats trail 7-0. Villanova trailing 7-0 as Delaware cashes in their first offensive possession. This is the Cats' second. First and 10 from the 23. Backs in the eye. Trillo in motion to the bottom of your screen. The ball has been whistled dead as Eric Pearson got tripped up coming out of, from under center. Tried to flip it back, but that was not a... A very clever uh, play. I, I, I've had that happen a few times, Carl. It's not a good feeling. You'll see Eric Pearson coming out. You'll see Wydell, the, the left guard, step back, step on his foot, and he goes down. It's one of those things. But that offensive line has to come off aggressively. Right now, they're they're setting a little bit. You can't do that. That's going to get the penetration. Right now, Villanova's struggling a little bit offensively. Minus three on the play. It could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Pearson. As Hunt, that's Hunt with the football coming across from the flanker position, makes the reception, but no running room as they close down. Greg Ventresca leading the Delaware charge on that play. You'll see here, this is the flanker screen. It's a good safe pass, the way you want to get your quarterback into a rhythm. Hunt just comes down the line there. You see him number two. But you'll see terrific uh, pursuit by the Delaware defense. Really nowhere to go. But a good positive play for Villanova, looking for the short pass and the big run. And Hunt's the kind of guy that can give you that play. Kind of former tailback, converted to flanker. For this season, has yet to really make an impact. He did have five catches, however, against Fordham in the opener. And he does have breakaway, big play capability. This is Cal Set with one move. Still short of the first down by about seven, so they're going to have to kick it away again. Three and out for the second time for Villanova. Sean Lenz and Derek Underwood on the tackle. Carl, looking downfield on that, he th I thought he had his wide receiver, number 25, Finnegan, in the seam over the middle. But I think uh, uh, Eric right now just looking for the positive play, rather not make a mistake, took the same pass. The pass, unfortunately, not a first down for Villanova. Venezia's first punt, 41 yards. This one end over end. Jermaine Sutton fields it at his own 25, makes one move makes another one and that's his last one is done away on the stop puts him down around the 26 yard line delaware seven villanova nothing Delaware gets ready to put it into play. Let's get a little scouting report on number 42, Darrell Brown from Bill Perry. And Darrell's brother. Bill? All right, Carl, thank you. I'm with John Brown, Darrell's brother. Darrell has aspirations to play pro football. John is a professional light heavyweight boxer with a 7-0 record fighting out of the Washington, D.C. area. Came up from D.C. to see the ball game. Darrell talks much about a career pro football. Yes, he does. He wants to go pro. He don't have a problem playing for any team. He just wants to stay healthy for this season to see how well um, his uh, leg feels this season so he can get through the season. When season. did he start thinking about professional football as a career? Uh, I would have say I would assume last year. Yeah. As okay. well as he done last year. And uh, by this being his senior year, he's been, when he come home for the summer, he's been really training hard. He wants to go pro and he loves football. But you can take him though if you had to, right? 
I don't think so. Right. As I said, John's a light heavyweight professional. But good luck in your career. Thank Thanks you so for joining much. us and enjoy the rest of the ball game. Okay, you got it. Let's go back to Carl. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. That's an honest scouting report, huh? <laughs> He's a light heavyweight, and uh, Daryl's a heavy super heavyweight. Heavy. <laughs> is that what it is? He's a super heavyweight. <laughs> Penalty on the play. Brings up in first and 15 now. Delaware. 11 plays, 11 rushing plays in their first drive. Coleman in motion to give to Darrell Brown. Wrestled down as he approaches the line of scrimmage. Mark Baker, the former defensive tackle, now an outside linebacker with the stop for going over. Mark Baker up from uh, my hometown area, East Aurora, New York. Uh, I grew up in that Buffalo area. Good to see the, the local guys from West New York making a play. Second and 13 here in the state lead main line. Upstate New York. Rough house stuff. Incomplete on the first pass thrown. Intended for Courtney Batts. Langan's first pass nowhere near the intended receiver. Carl, the timing just a little bit off there. The lane was there, but by the time Langham made the fake to Brown up the middle, Bats had already went through that lane. Again, when, when you run that type of option offense, it's tough to get in sync with your wide receivers in the passing game. Third and 13. These are the situations that Villanova needs to get Delaware into. Langan rolls left, sets, and throws. Devian Logan had it in his hands, but could not bring it down. The pass intended for tight end Rob Higby. Devian Logan, the senior free safety. You'll see first hand zone here. Devian Logan, number 24, will pop in the lower left side of your screen there. You see. Langham running to his left, throwing back his right, a tough throw. That's not a throw you want to make. Devin should have picked that one off. But again, he stayed home, stayed in center field. You get Delaware in those situations, they're going to get in trouble, third and 15. They're not an efficient passing team. The punt going out of bounds. Petrillo has no chance at it. Pete Petrillo wants to go out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. That's where Villanova will put it into play, trailing 7-0 here. 4-53 remaining in the first. After a 44-yard punt by Scott White, Villanova putting it in play now at the 32-yard line. Pearson, barking out signals. Play action, as Cal set open. Bobbles it, incomplete. Be sure to watch all of tomorrow's NFL action starting at 11 a.m. with This is the NFL, that's Steve Sable's show, follow at 11.30. With Eagles Game Day Live. Uh, uh, that's that's my show, Carl. Yes, George, we know that. Then at noon, it's Fox NFL Sunday, followed by the Green Bay Packers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. That's Rich Kotite show. That's at 1 p.m. right here on Fox 29, WTXF TV. And of course, at 4 o'clock, the Eagles post game show. That's mine. We got it all covered, don't we? We got something for everybody. Don't at move Fox that 29. <laughs> Second and 10 for Villanova. Backs in the eye like too much time. Pearson, two of three passing, but only seven yards. Full start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. It was a false start by Villanova, but I think it was caused by, as you see, the defensive line of Delaware moving into position, kind of threw a lot of sync. <laughs> Delaware's playing formations right now doing a very good job of it. Second and 15, 447 remaining here in the first quarter. Eric Pearson, 53% of his passes completed last year, but he threw 11 interceptions, four for touchdowns. And he needs to run this football as he cuts back. He approaches the original line of scrimmage, but still the Villanova offense is yet to get untracked. 
They spread him out there with three wide, Carl, but really had nowhere to go with the football. Pearson moved around looking for someone. Had to put it down and try to make some yardage on his own. Again, these... What an ugly statistic, huh? Rushing minus 21 yards last season. Eric Pearson came out of Wilkes-Barre. 6'3", 210-pounder, a highly heralded quarterback. Has shown flashes, but he's been mostly inconsistent thus far in his collegiate career. Pearson going to run again. The Blue Hens close down as he approaches the 35-yard line. Greg Ventresca leading the defensive charge. Have to kick it away. Here you'll see Eric Pearson coming out from under center. Stumbles a little bit. He's a little bit out of sync. I think right now he just got to wait in that pocket. He's, he, he's really not ready to pull the trigger. When you sit in that pocket, you got to plant and throw. It looked like he had Josh Doblin open downfield, but tucked the ball away and looking to run. He's got to pull the trigger and deliver with the pass rather than try to make the play on the run. So far, the most valuable player for Villanova is the punter, Frank Venezia. 41-yarder, followed by a 44-yarder to help keep Delaware on the other side of that midfield line. Venezia, again, gets off a pretty good one. That's Williams with the football to about the 26. Today's game is brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Delaware. Whatever life brings, they'll be there for you. Kirk Wild on the previous tackle as Delaware puts it in play at their own 27-yard line. First and 10. They give us to Brown up the middle. He runs in and out of the tackle of number eight. That's Tyrone Frazier. 22 tackles coming into this game. Tyrone is tied with Debbie and Logan as the leading tackler for the Villanova defense, the Nasty Boys. Wait, you see Tyrone there. He, he's pretty big himself, 6'2", 225, and Darrell just moved him back about three yards. Second down and six. That's in flower, spread wide to the right. They give again to Brown as he just keeps going backwards this time. Frazier again. Nate McIntyre there to close it down as Darrell Brown. Again, you'll down. see Tyrone Frazier here, Carl, reading the play very nicely. It's a sprint draw. He sees the comeback. But there's 256 pounds, and that's a tough guy to bring down with one. The Villanova. He is still down on the field, though. That is Darrell Brown flat on his back. Has not moved very much since that tackle. As Frazier met him first, stood him up a little bit, and Nate McIntyre comes and closes down. Watch number 91 come on top. You'll see Daryl Brown right here. This is the sprint draw. He's looking for the cutback. He gets the cutback. Tyrone Frazier with the initial hit. He pushed him out of the way, and here comes the gang. It looks like running there right, right in the back. That could be a kidney problem. It's hard to tell one of those very active defensive backs for Villanova close quickly. I could not get his number from that angle. Yeah, that's a, and then we watch that game, uh, the Cardinals against the Giants uh, last Sunday night. Rodney Hampton uh, took that same shot. He's out a few weeks. And you see where there was a play where Brown couldn't get his pad level down because he was spun around. The secondary people get a good free shot at a place where you don't have any pads. And they take them, believe me. <laughs> yes. Third and three. Lang and rolling. He has a blocker. But he does not have a first down. Very close, Carl. Depends where they spot this one, I think. Andy Kopar did a nice job of containing that, allowing him not to get outside. And McIntyre and Frazier come in to make the stop. They will have a measurement, I do believe. <laughs> 209 remaining in the first quarter. Delaware leading Villanova. The Villanova offense thus far has been relatively non-existent. Delaware scored on their first drive. Andy Kobaugh trying to prevent them from getting another drive mounted here. And he did. Delaware Gutsy defense call here, Carl. Gutsy call right here. What's he going to do? I think Tubby Raymond, if he 
he goes for it here is he's trying to find out something about his football team very early in the season. He must have ice in his veins right now to, to go for this on your own, you know, 37-yard line. You got a 7-0 lead in a game like this. Quickly now, let's go to Bill Perry for an update on Daryl Brown. Bill? All right, good news. No problems really with Daryl. Just a contusion to the lower back, and uh, he's back in the ball game. So no serious injury. We're always glad to see that. You got it, Carl. Thank you very much, Bill. All right, it is fourth down and one. I wonder who's going to get the ball. As Bill just told you, Daryl Brown is there. It's a keeper. Langan keeps it. Goes right up Matt Smith's tail. That is the center. Senior out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, 6'3", 250-pounder. That was an old pretty good quarterback came out of that city at one time. What was that guy, number 12 with the Jets, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania? He used to wear pantyhose. Yeah. <laughs> you remember all the details, don't you? <laughs> old Joe Namath, Joe Willie. One of the best, Hall of Famer, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. And we're going to measure again. As you can see, he's got this one. By a good length and a half on that football, so Delaware keeps it. Not only does Tubby Raven have ice water in his Man. veins, he has a guaranteed contract for life. 67-year-old <laughs> head coach, 232 wins against just 93 losses and two ties in his 29 seasons at Delaware. As Delaware racks up their fifth first down here in the first quarter. The fake to Brown, the toss to Williams. He's got a lane. Hardy closes and gets him from behind. Chris Hardy, the strong safety, makes an excellent tackle. Good pursuit there. Good blocking by Delaware to set yeah. it up. If Chris, Chris Hardy doesn't make this tackle, this baby's in the end zone. You'll see it right here. Langan coming down the line. There's the ride fake to Brown. Comes out, makes the pitch. Very decisive with the pitch. And you'll see Williams. He is quick. He bursts through there. Hardy doesn't make the play. That one may be in the end zone. Talk about quick. Pat Williams. 448 in the 40, so he does have some speed, as Ryan just told you. There's that cross buck. One man is a penalty on the play. Williams takes it down the sidelines. There he's tackled by number 42, Brian Barajas. But I think this one's coming back. That is the Delaware scissors play, and that's the one that has the Delaware defense really concerned. Talking to Dan McNeil, they can account for a lot of people. That scissors play is the one they really can't account for because of the fast flow that he wants out of his linebackers. We'll get a look at this from the end zone. You see all the motion to the right. And uh-oh, here he comes back the other way. You got one-on-one -on -one with a lot of green grass and blue skies out there. That's the matchup you'd like as any offensive running back. Offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Carl, I should say, a lot of green astroturf. Yeah, I didn't want to correct you, but this is the 90s, guys. When you played... They had like what? We did have Dirt. some grass. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Eagles would love to have this field. This is a terrific field here at Villanova Stadium. First and 20 now for Delaware at the 40-yard line. They're going to pass. Langan hurries by number 66. Derek Forgione, freshman. Eric Forgione out of Dunmore, Pennsylvania, 6'3", 235-pounder. You'll see Derek blow right up the middle. They're looking for the screen back. Good pressure on the quarterback. Those are the situations that Villanova has to get Delaware into. The known passing situations. Kick your shoes back and come after the quarterback. Langham didn't have a chance. Second down and 31. Right about the 28, 29-yard line. Give us to Brown, and he's going to get a lot of it back as he gets back up to the 40. Chris Hardy once again on the tackle. Pretty good confidence in a running game when on uh, second and about uh, a whole boatload, you give it to your fullback up the middle and still get 10. Well, he is a boatload all by himself, as we've already suggested a number of different times. Daryl Brown, the man for Delaware, as they lead it 7 0 here. That's the end of the first quarter at Villanova. Delaware.
as we get ready to start the second quarter, going over, trailing Delaware, seven nothing. Tubby Ravens, Blue Hens. I told you earlier, Tubby has won just about three for every one he's lost in his 29 years at Delaware, one of the great coaches in college football history, really. Andy Talley building a great program here at Villanova, too, here in his 10th year. Langan overthrows his intended receiver. That's number 22, Marvell Scott, transfer out of the University of Illinois. We talked about Tubby being one of the all-timers. You see Eddie Robinson. I don't think anybody will ever catch that. 389 wins at Grambling. And you can see, not too far down, the list. You have to go and you see some of the great names. Woody Hayes. Scott White. The punt is blocked. Villanova blocks it, so we have our first potential big break in the ball game. Well, we talked to Tubby Raymond yesterday, and you, uh, Carl, you just showed that great record he has. But one problem he had last week was special teams. They hurt him big time. This is a play that could hurt him. Time will tell. Here you see the pressure. It's a jailbreak. Three Villanova defenders come in to block that kick. I think the only good thing for Delaware in that play was a return for a touchdown. Watch number 24, Debbie and Logan coming in. Gets his body in front of the kick. Comes down to a Delaware player, but Deion Jackson's right there all over him. So time for Eric Pearson now to step up and convert for Villanova. Of course, you know that Pat Mulhern led Delaware defense. Doesn't want to see that happen. This is Pearson taking himself over the right side. He's got a gain of about six or seven. Mark Hondrew on the tackle. Pearson's a big, strong guy, 6'3", 250, and he can run that option. And we can, he can set frame going north and south. He can make some yards. Right there, he picks up about six and a half or seven. He got outside the perimeter of that Delaware defense. You get out there, you can be effective. Second and three now. Offensive coordinator Craig Johnson suggested to us earlier that he, in fact, wanted to see Pearson get hit early, so we got into the flow of the game. We'll come back to game action. 14-14 remaining here in the second quarter. Delaware leads Nova 7-0. Tom Marchese now at quarterback. As we told you earlier, it's very hot here. Let's get an update now on why Eric Pearson is on the bench. Bill Perry's down there as well. Bill? All right, Carl, it is just heat. My towel is dry, and I need a lot of help, and Eric needs even more. He's got a cold, wet towel over his head now. It's unusually hot down here. The trainers are keeping the players moist. They keep some towels in an ice bucket, so that's a very cold towel, and they're cooling off Eric Pearson. He should return to this football game. You got it. Case gives it to Sifford. Thank you very much, Bill, for that update. 14 minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Jeff Gardner on the stop. Sifford with the carry. Curtis Sifford, the true freshman out of San Bernardino, California. Carl, Villanova would like to run right where they have uh, Ramirez and Roz and uh, Benziha, their center, but the, that's their experience side, but they haven't been effective going there thus far. Gain of six on the play. It's a combination of two plays, pardon me. Brings up a third and four. Cal set the lone setback behind Marquez, who looks to throw. He's got his freshman wide out, Farron, and he's got a first down. This kid is another one of nine Californians on the Villanova roster. That's Brian Finner, and he has a twin brother, Brad. Both of them, excellent players, excellent prospect. This is Finner. Take another look, and we'll pick up the story in a moment. Case, quick drop, sets a three, looks out there. They're running just a quick out and a slant in behind it. Finneran, big target, six foot five, the leading receiver in the history of CIF, which is California interscholastic football out there. Hey, when you think of all the great talent of this guy was number one, he's going to be a future star. And he's already a star here in his first three games. We'll again continue this story in a moment. First and ten, Villanova Marquez turns the wrong way, and it looks like he's still going to get about five on the play. That was the old quarterback spinner play. That was put in especially for this game. And Marquez turned around and said, uh oh. Yeah, notice the old quarterback trying to cover for you his You got that Patriot. right. <laughs> Turns the wrong way. Oh, it's it's the, uh, the, the, the other left he told that fullback. <laughs> quarterback didn't make that mistake. But notice that, that quick thinking got up there and made four and a half yards. Kenny Bailey comes in to make the stop for Delaware. 
second and five. So on a busted play, Villanova gains five downs. Gains five yards, pardon me. <laughs> got me all shook up here. That quarterback spinner play got you. That was that it? <laughs> all right, as I try and regroup here, Tom Marquez will do the same thing as he comes over to the sideline. 12-23 remaining in the second quarter. Delaware had a punt block. Villanova recovered. 30-yard line. They are driving now. They are at the 10-yard line. Carl, you had a chance to talk about uh, those uh, nine players from California on this uh, Villanova team. That's some pretty expensive recruiting, isn't it? Well, you know, what's interesting is that they, 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 they meaning Villanova, have, have opted to make a, a concerted effort to go out to California because with all the big programs out there and all the competition, a lot of these one double-A caliber players, the guys who are a step too slow or five, five pounds too light, yeah. We're falling through the cracks, and Villanova's happy to have him here. Tonight on Fox, it's a full hour of cops at 8 p.m. Then America's Most Wanted at 9, followed by the 10 o'clock news right here on WTXF Fox 29. Of course, you can see BP's BP's tonight with the one and only Bill Perry. Get that plug in. <laughs> Second down and five. Marquez still in. Pearson still with a wet towel on his forehead as he tries to calm down. Marquez rolling. And a man has one at the back of the end zone and overthrows Hunt. He had Hunt the first time wide open. He just couldn't pull the trigger. Boggs, he got flushed from that pocket. But as you see Hunt right there, he was open not only once on the design of the play, but the second time in Marquez just overthrew him. Flushed from the pocket, tough to throw on the run. I thought Marquez had a lane to run as well, had he wanted well, once to. Once he got outside that corner, you'll see the, you know, the ride fake in there. The cow said, comes outside. Good block. Right there, he should have delivered to Hunt, who was open in the end, so we didn't see him there, but he comes out a little more. Hunt spins back around, gets open, and the ball just sails over his head. Lytle throwing that good block to give him that extra time to throw that pass. Third and five now. Villanova just one of four in third down conversion attempts. Marquez has the ball as he takes the option over the right side and does not get it. Villanova would be wise to take three here. Larry McSeed on the stop for Delaware. McSeed makes the play, but that it, it, an entire Delaware defense did an excellent job, particularly their linebackers, of just stretching the play out. When you run that option, that's the key. Make the quarterback hold the ball as long as you can. That's what they did on that play, and that's why they're going for the field goal. Freshman Mark Kiefer out of Annapolis, Maryland, comes on to attempt it out of the hold of Mark Case. From the 22-yard line, a 32-yard field goal is good. So Villanova is on the board. Meanwhile, on the sideline, Eric Pearson still being tended to by the Villanova Athletic Training Staff. With the score, Delaware 7, Villanova 3, 11-28 remaining here in the second quarter. All right, here it is, the iced towels. And uh, Eric Pearson was in need of an iced towel and still is. And now, of course, uh, Delaware awaiting the possession of the football, so Eric will have some more time to recover. He was feeling woozy, but I am told, as the trainers speak with him, that he is feeling better. If he'll return, well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, he's feeling better, though. It was just a matter of extreme heat out here. I, guys, I think you said at game time, 84 degrees. It's very humid out here. And I got to go for one of those wet towels. Back to you. This is not getting it done. <laughs> okay, Bill. Thank you very much. 87% humidity to go along with those 85 degrees. And Williams going back to try and field that an easier kick and stays in the end zone rather wisely. Wow, smoke that thing. <laughs> smoke it into that end zone. That had some hang time on it, didn't it? I would imagine that 15 mile per hour wind we talked about earlier too was at his back. <laughs> the first and 10 Delaware at their own 20 yard line. Carl, it appears Villanova has settled down a little bit into their game offensively and defensively after that initial drive. Defensively, they've, they've held Delaware, but of course, Delaware has hurt themselves with penalties. Wing back to the right. The give is to the left halfback, and he goes over the right side. That's Pat Williams, and Devian Logan makes the stop, but not before Pat Williams has a Delaware first down. 
this is some combination that Delaware has. They give you Brown, big and strong inside. He can also block, and they got Williams with the speed to the outside. Again, Brown with the kickout block. Lots of room out there. Gain of 11 on the play. First and 10. At the 31. Langan keeps it. Kobaugh closes down, makes the stop from the behind. So Andy Kobaugh not only choked off the pitch, but makes the tackle. Kobaugh's having a strong game right now. That lo It almost looked like a design run all the way, although Delaware did have a receiver streaking down the center field. I think it was a one-receiver type route. If, he, if he's open, give it to him. If not, take the run. There you see Keith Langham, Medford, New Jersey, 6'3", 199 pounds. And Delaware does a lot of recruiting in so South Jersey. So Shawnee High School, where Keith is from has shown a pretty good program in both football and basketball over the last few years. Norman Coleman with that carry for Delaware. Remo Garneri on the tackle for Villanova. Carl, we're speaking of South Jersey. I have a friend of mine here in the press box, a, a Villanova alumnus, president of Community Bank. Uh, Jerry Van Miller's up there hanging out with us, enjoying the festivities. He's got his pom-poms rooting for Villanova here. <laughs> Third down and four for Delaware. <laughs> and then in motion was Marbell Scott. The give is to Darrell Brown, and it's a first down for the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens. This wing tee comes after, comes after you in so many ways. There's the motion they give to Brown. They've been giving him the ride, the ride, the ride. That time they give him the ball, and he pops up there for the first down. Boy, when he gets his pad level down, get out of the way. Nine rushes, 55 yards, having a big day already. It's the eighth first down for Delaware. Lang gives it inside. He rides Darrell Brown and carries out the fake. He and Pat Williams were going over the right side. Everybody else just pushing that pile up the middle. Kumpan, Pine, Smith, Trosel, and Archibald. The offensive lineman for Delaware doing a very good job thus far here this afternoon. As they continue to chew up yardage on each possession. Only 7-3 to three now for Delaware. Moving bodies back. Langan keeping it. Cobalt with the tackle. Can't play it any better than that. Andy Cobalt right there. It's a, I mean, he seems to be in on every play in this ball game right now. He played the option, really got to had Langan in no man's land. You'll see Langan come out right here. Look at Andy. Just settles in, plays the quarterback, plays the pitch, and makes the tackle. You cannot play the option any better than Andy Cobalt played it right there. And we will get to meet Andy Cobalt and his family at halftime. Third and four now. This is Williams. Great speed. Great speed to the outside. Debbie Logan on the tackle. He would have needed Carl Lewis speed to get around the corner there. <laughs> and he got some help here from number 53. That's Preston Walker, a junior linebacker out of Glendale, Arizona. Excellent pursuit by the entire Villanova defense. That's what you have to do against that speed. You've got to get a bunch of people out there. Fourth and three now, and Delaware will go for it at midfield. At the 47-yard line. Brown dives for it, and I think he's got it. There was no way he was going to get it. That hole closed up, and he just dove over everybody. Reminiscent of but Randall Cunningham's brother, Sam the Bam Cunningham at USC, just jumped over the top. How many NFL coaches would be fired <laughs> making calls like that? Fourth and three. What, well, I'll tell you what great confidence uh, Tubby Raymond has in that offense. And, hey, they've been coming through for him. 11 carries, 61 yards for Darrell Brown. First down, Delaware. The give is to Brown up the middle. And he's tripped up. Tripped up at about the 27-yard line by Dunaway. Curtis Dunaway had a hold of his ankles and didn't let go, or else Darrell Brown was going to go all the way. Here you see Brown right up the middle. 
Misdirection play again. This play is somewhat uh, reminiscent of last year's game. He had the 71-yard touchdown run that broke Villanova's back. He almost had one there. The Villanova defense must tighten up here. 19 yards on the carry. Darrell Brown. This is Marvell Scott. Dunaway with the tackle. Once again, an update on the condition of Villanova quarterback Eric Pearson. Here's Bill Perry. Bill? All right, Carl, thank you. The saga of the wet towel continues. They just applied a new wet towel, a cold wet towel. Eric Pearson took a walk. He's now standing along the sidelines. I've been told by the Villanova trainer that it is unlikely that he will return in this half. He's having a little problems recognizing signals when they were talking to him, so he needs a little more time. Uh, again, extremely hot out here, and they're trying to cool him off. And now the Villanova defense trying to cool off that Delaware running attack. Carl? In 13, Langan takes over the right side. He's on his own now. Does a nice job, too. That was the 11th play of this drive for Delaware. Greg Ziegler on the tackle. Third and about four facing Delaware. Now, that may sound longer than it is because if you're Tubby Raymond, you're looking at two plays here. They're in that four down area. It seems the whole field is four down here for Tubby. <laughs> No hesitation in his game plan. Third and four. The 12th play of the drive now. Clock was down on that one. Wise timeout by the young quarterback, Langan. You are watching the Delaware Blue Hens versus the Villanova Wildcats on WTXF-TV, Fox 29 in Philadelphia. I'm Carl Church along with Ron Jaworski and Bill Perry as Delaware leads it 7-3 with 6-12 remaining here in the second quarter. Ron, you know, we, we saw Delaware go up and down the field at the very beginning. They scored seven points in their first drive. Since then, Villanova, until this drive, had held them in check. Now, what's the difference here? Well, really, it was uh, Delaware stopped themselves. The, the penalties really hurt them. And when you, bat, when you put this Delaware offense into the long situations, the third and 15, the third and 20, you know, they just don't have the proficient passing game that, that you can make up that yardage. So they hurt themselves. When they stay in the regular situations, they're tough to stop. I mean, Andy Talley has got to find something defensively with these guys to at least slow them down. If they're piling up a lot of yards, fortunately for, for Villanova, it's only 7-3. to three. You can see they're eating up the clock, eating up yards. And how many times can Villanova hold on in? All these guys need them ice towels down there with Bill. 12 plays, 63 yards thus far in this drive. And they're eating up a whole lot of clock at the same time. To give inside and the stop on Brown at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a fourth down and about three and a half, four to go facing the Blue Hens. Mark Baker on the stop. Offensively, this is really the gray area. I mean, do, do you throw it? Do you run it? Uh, with with, a, with a, a passing game that Delaware has, you would kind of think that they would run the ball here. On fourth and four, why not kick it and get those points? On the I, 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 I agree with you there. But who am I to second-guess Tubby? Well, they're three for three thus far on fourth down. It looks like they've got another one. And they made it look easy. That was Norman Coleman. Seven for 57 yards, seven carries last week against William and Mary. And a touchdown. So thus far, he's gotten some key contributions here. You'll see their power Delaware. game is very effective. When they go man on a man on a man, they create some gaps. And it's exactly what they did right there. That was uh, Brian Rahas making the tackle, but you know, it's, uh, too, way too far down the field when he got a fourth and four. First and 10 at the 11, so Delaware can get another first down. The give is to Brown over the left side as he tries to push ahead inside the 10. Tubby Raymond. And Ted Kemsky, his offensive coordinator, talking about the play they're going to run now. As they look at a second down at about nine. 440 remaining. Second down. Langan. Coleman. A hit by Tyrone Frazier. And Greg Ziegler comes in to finish it off. Come on, 
again, you'll see Coleman. They're running the power again with Brown up inside. But you get the penetration from Frazier right there. That's what you have to get to stop the power game. Not the traffic game. That was the power game. Come off your blocks and fill the gap. Third and six for Delaware. The 16th play of this drive. Langan. Tackled by Kobal. Inside the five, however. Third and six. It'll bring up a fourth and about three. Does Tubby have a kicker on his team? He does. Oh, does he Does he ever use him? And one he gave a scholarship to, which is something he doesn't often do to a true freshman coming in. But the kid from Ojai, California, Sean Leach, set some records out in that CIF we were talking about earlier, but he's on the bench. They are four for four thus far on fourth down attempts. Brown takes it over. I do not think he got it. And after all that, it looks like Villanova is going to take over. All that for nothing except the tired Villanova defense right now. But it's got to be disappointing for Delaware. March the length of the field. What was it 17, 18 plays, something like that? Andy Cobal and Chris Curtis come over to stop what Tubby Raymond threw out there. As the tight end Rob Higby gets a bit of a lecture. Apparently missed the block. Tubby not a happy camper right now got to be happy with the offense the way they sustain that drive and move the ball but very disappointed with no points out of that terrific drive let me define terrific for you 17 plays 78 yards eight minutes and eight seconds worth the clock and nothing fumble and it looks like delaware was the first arm but i think villanova got it back Larry McSeed came up shaking his fists as if he missed an opportunity. The Delaware linebacker and Andy Talley's Villanova Wildcats are very lucky to escape with possession of this football you see game. And you see Marques, you know, your younger quarterback probably hasn't had the number of reps uh, with Calcet that you'd like to have. Uh, the, the, the handoff, not a clean one with, with Marques and Calcet, and certainly Villanova very lucky to recover their fumble deep in their own territory. And Ganey Yard, second and nine now. Backs in the eye behind Marques. With Helder in motion. The give is to Cal Set. He gets up to about the five and no further. Sean Lenz. At a central Bucks East, a former quarterback, now playing middle linebacker for Delaware. Carl Craig. With the score, Delaware 7, Villanova 3 will step aside with 2.24 remaining to be played in the half. Talking about Packers and Eagles, how about game day live gets it going for you anyway at 11.30 tomorrow. Give me a little hint on your prediction. I mean, I know no, people have to tune no, in no, at 11.30. No, no, absolutely not. You know it's the most fast-paced show, live television, Eagles game day live from the vet at 11.30 uh, with yours truly and, of course, my co-host, Eric Allen. And I do have a little surprise that's going to happen tomorrow about 11.30 regarding Eric Allen. So everyone's got to tune in. Well, there it is. There's the lineup for you for tomorrow, folks. Starts at 11. We'll finish up sometime about 4.30 with that post-game show. Oh, your post-game show. <laughs> Our post-game show. Finneran had it. Intended for Brian Finneran. It was in his hands. Paul Williams, the twin brother of Pat Williams, the offensive back for Delaware. And Finneran just dropped it. Finneran, the true freshman from California. Got to make this play. Big situation. Hit him right in the hands. Good throw by Marquez. The corner out there in the roll-up zone makes a hit, but you got to find a way to make that catch in a critical situation like it was right there. Benizia with punts of 41, 44, and 41. He needs a big one now. Joe Romanelli, a single safety, takes a Villanova bounce. Goes beyond midfield, comes to rest at around the 45-yard line. 50-yard punt by Frank Venezia. A lot of pressure on Frank Venezia. Well, you'll this see Venezia right here with a great camera angle. Here comes the ball, and here comes the rush. You got about 1.2 to get this thing off, and there they come, right, right between the outstretched arms of two Delaware defenders and a big AstroTurf bounce. <laughs> 2.06 remaining here. 
Delaware with the football and the lead. First and 10 at their own 45. Williams in motion. Langan pitches it to Williams. Hardy and Frazier with the pursuit as he goes out of bounds. Frazier's having a very active game, filling the gaps, pursuing from behind, making a lot of plays. Him and Kobos seem to be the guys that are always around the ball. So last week against uh, Liberty, A.J. Borowski, the transfer from Penn State, was very active. The other inside linebacker thus far in the first half, Tyrone Frazier, his twin, the inside of that 3-4 configuration for Villanova, has been making the plays. A minute 59 remaining. Second and seven. Lang in the throw. As his man, Flower, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first catch by a Delaware wide receiver in a game and a half. But there's a flag on the play. So we have yet to see the first catch by a Delaware wide receiver. We have seen it, but it be coming back. <laughs> 17 yards on that reception, negated by the penalty. In the slot, very simple route, the out and then turn in behind it, did a good job of clearing out the secondary, sat down to the hole, made the catch, Langham with a terrific throw on time with the receiver. Unfortunately, the holding penalty will bring it back. Holding, offense, 10-yard penalty, I guess I'm still second down. A Delaware fan, fortunately, if you're a Villanova fan. And fortunately for the offense of Delaware, it only ate up about seven seconds worth of clock. So it's now second and 17 at their own 35-yard line. Delaware thus far penalized three times for a total of 25 yards. Langan back to pass. Has his man, Courtney Batts, and he drops it. Courtney Batts, the freshman out of Penn Charter, Six foot, 170 pounder, covered by Brian Barajas, but Courtney Batts is another good story. Talk about good athletes. Here's a kid who was drafted twice by the Orioles and the Mets. Pretty good baseball player. He's risking it all playing football. <laughs> That's right. Well, there is no baseball right now. He might be doing the right thing. What, what's that? What's that sport? Yeah, gone. Yeah. Six foot, 172 pounder. Courtney Batts, third and 20 now for Delaware. Ball on their own 35. They give us to Brown on the delay, and Frazier's waiting for him. Frazier's there again. Puts him down. You know, speaking of bats, since he has all that athleticism, baseball, football, you know, he's got to come up with a name. Can we do, like, neon something or maybe some tricky, you know? You can. Catchy name? Yeah, we get, you can. We'll work on it at halftime. <laughs> You are the color analyst, Ron. That is your job. It's in your job description. I must be colorful then, right? Tyrone Fraser playing terrific. 6'2", 225 out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Fraser and Cobalt have been all over the field. Petrillo, number 18. Pete Petrillo out of Lower Murray, I do believe. A local boy back there in single safety. Carl, uh, I'll be interested to see what uh, Andy Talley's going to have to, to say to our friend Bill Perry when he speaks him at, at halftime. <laughs> He's got to be very happy that the score is only 7-3. I mean, it's a, a half totally dominated by Delaware. And Andy told us, uh, quite frankly, as you intimated earlier, Ron, that this was a, a Delaware team that he thought was beatable, certainly by the team he has. They're healthier than they, they were last year. 18 starters went down last year for Villanova. They were decimated by injuries, and, and you really didn't know what the kind of football team they had they were three and eight but this year he thinks he's got a pretty good football team scott white to punt it away logan in there again almost got it petrillo has it now heads to the sideline why'd he put it in reverse there <laughs> manage that clock better than that 113 remaining larry mcseed on the tackle Pete Petrillo probably asking himself the same question. 113 remaining here. It's Villanova has another chance to put some points on the board. They'll start from their own 24-yard line. Marquez in for Pearson at quarterback. Delaware has two timeouts. Villanova none. Marquez to Finneran at the 50-yard line. They've got to hurry up. 
The clock will stop as they move the chains. 106 remaining in the second quarter. Wise play selection. Finner and dropped the ball in the last series. Comes back with a big catch here. He's a go-to guy. 6'5 target. Look for him. He'll make the big catch for you. 28 yards for number 25 on that one. Start, bring it back five yards. Cross start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Uh, so it'll be first and 15 now. Inside a minute to go. Marquez has trips to the right, to the left side, the wide side of the field. He gets some pressure, he loses that pressure and throws long and incomplete. Tom Marquez does well to get out of there, but he didn't seem to know which way he was going. Well, he, he, he was, it was unfortunate for Villanova because he had Josh Doblin open streaking down the middle of the field, but when you're running for your life back there out of the pocket, it's pretty hard to locate people. Josh they went Dalton. with the trips formation, and they actually get slot, they shot him right down the middle of the field, Doblin did, and it was open, but uh, Marquez was flushed from the pocket. Doblin, the fastest man on the Villanova Wildcat team, a freshman out of Pottstown. His dad, you might remember the name, Jack Doblin, a former NFL wideout as well. Second and 15. Ball at the 47 of Villanova. Marquez flushed out of the pocket. Looks like there will be a holding penalty on the play. That wasn't a hold. It was a tackle. It was a tackle. You'll see Marquez dropping back right here. Kind of leaves the pocket. There's, there's the tackle, I guess. The best way to call that one. That was, you know. Before the people from that part of the world come after me, I want to make a correction that is Pottsville for Josh Dalton, not Pottstown. So my apologies to the folks from the Ville as opposed to the town. Accepted. Thank you so much. 37 seconds remaining. This time trips to the right. And from the blind side, Marquez was taken down, but Cal Set brings it up over the 50-yard line. The old Clock shovel running. pass. Clock Every running, second. 19 seconds remaining. 16 yards on that play for the Marquez drop back here, sets in the pocket, a little shovel pitch to Cal Set coming underneath. Now and nine boy, seconds remaining. You want to play remaining. quarterback, you take hits like that. And confusion out there on the part of the Villanova offense, and they will not get another playoff. So I know Andy Talley will not be happy about that. They had 19 seconds left in the half. They should have gotten another playoff, at least one anyway. As they head into the locker room, Delaware has a 7-3 lead, as we suggested earlier. Hey, if you're Andy Talley and the Wildcats, you can't be unhappy about that. If you're Tubby Raymond, you can't really be happy about it. Well, it was total domination by Delaware. The fact that it's only 7-3, Andy Talley has got to be feeling pretty good. Tubby Raymond's got to be feeling good because his team dominated. He would love to have more points, but it's been good, solid 1-AA football. Bill Perry, I'll keep you in Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Bill Perry down there with Coach Tubby Raymond. Bill? Tubby, the way you've dominated this football game and you're only up 7-3, there has to be some frustration. I think that's one of our problems last week. We just didn't score uh, in, with respect to the amount of yards we made, and we've made a lot of mistakes out there. We're a young football team. We've got a long ways to go, and it's becoming very obvious. Your first drive, clockwork. You just ate some clock, and you marched it down the field running the ball. Did Villanova make any adjustments from there to stop you, although maybe you just stopped not, yourself? Not really. We, we stopped ourselves. Yeah. We had a couple of holding penalties, and we've had some problems with some assignments. But that's what coaching is all about. If, if I didn't have anything to do, I wouldn't have a job. One more question for you, and I'll let you go. You're four of five on fourth down conversions, only failing the last time from in close. Is that just a supreme confidence in your offense to get it done, or maybe a lack of you confidence Darryl, in your kicker? If you, no, no. If you got <laughs> Daryl Brown, why not give him the ball? You're a coach. you got to love it, right? Good luck, Coach. That's Tubby Raymond live. He'll be joining his players in the locker room. We have a full halftime of uh, festivities set for you. And uh, we'll be back with a lot more. We're at the half. We're going to take it back upstairs to Carl and Ron. Yeah, Bill, I thought you were going to chase Tubby into the locker room, Bill, to find out what they're going to do when we come back. Well, we know one thing. When we come back, 
We'll have a whole lot for you here at Villanova. At the end of the first half, the Delaware Blue Hens lead the Villanova Wildcats 7-3. Stay tuned for the Four Dealers Halftime Report with Bill Perry right after this. You are watching Channel 29. We just talked with Tubby Raymond live. Of course, he is now in that Delaware locker room. And Tubby Raymond is in his 29th year as head coach at Delaware. And if he is able to win seven football games this year, he will move past Woody Hayes into 10th place as the all-time winningest coach in college football history. I, I don't give that much thought. I've never felt that. I've never felt that those numbers were mine anyway. They belong to the team. They belong to the people here at Delaware, and I, I really don't give that much thought. Coach Raymond's real, uh, real team-oriented and real team goal-oriented, and a lot of things, even his own personal achievements, doesn't come into play that much. That's kind of uh, his philosophy, even as a team. I mean, he didn't, he didn't go out there and win. X amount of games, that's the way he looks at it. He didn't go out there with X amount of games. His players did. He can only coach them so much, and they got to play. So, I mean, he really doesn't set it, either his goals, like his own personal milestones, or uh, individual milestones. He really doesn't uh, set too much value upon them, at least in public. I never started out counting wins, and I, you know, didn't expect to, um, to win as many games as we've won, and, you know, hopefully we'll win a few more. All right, you have seen this list before. It deserves a second look. Eddie Robinson, of course, the all-time winningest coach in college football history. Pop Warner, coach at Temple, number four on that list. And some coaches who are still active, like Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden, most prominently on that uh, list that Tubby Raymond will be cracking if he gets seven victories this year. Now, after a touchdown at a football game, whether it be college or pro, what do you usually see? Right, you see the touchdown maker styling, celebrating, accepting the congratulations in the end zone. Well, in Villanova's opening win over Fordham, Anthony Cowsett scored a touchdown. But it was number 58, a left guard, who received the congratulations. Rather strange. His name, Andy Wydell. play to the left side and I was on the open side guard on the way from the play and I wanted to try to cut my man off and I uh, ended up tripping up and falling on the ground. They broke about three tackles and I saw him head for the end zone and I just saw you know Fordham jersey come right up and I just went over and tried to hit the pile and move the pile into the end zone. scored a touchdown. I got excited afterwards, put my hands up when I was on the ground. I guess everyone thought I had the ball or something and came running over and congratulated us. It's a great feeling, great feeling. Seven to three, Delaware leading Villanova. We're at the half, we'll be back after this. For the second half, Delaware will receive the kick from Frank Benizia. Williams does not catch it, and it is a touchback to bring it out from the 20. Let's take a look at the first half stats here at Villanova Stadium. First down, you can see Delaware is dominated just about everywhere on that on that sheet Total there. yards, 169 to 71, Delaware in favor. Offensive plays, 43 to 21. Time possession, which could show the wear and tear from the sheet late in the ball game. 18 minutes, 23 seconds to Villanova's 11 minutes, 37 seconds. Total Delaware domination, except on the scoreboard. Including that is a long drive, 17 plays, 8 minutes and 8 seconds there. At the end of the second quarter. Just underway here at Villanova Stadium. As you can see, the scores from around the Yankee Conference today. Boston, you and Maine are tied at the half. New Hampshire leading JMU by 14. Northeastern's 13 to 7 over Rhode Island at the half. Harold Brown with the handoff taking it up the middle where he's owned that territory today. 
Mark Baker on the tackle for Villanova. And Carl, I think that time possession in the first half can have a tendency to wear a defense down. The Villanova defense has been on the field an awful long time. Daryl Brown, 18 rushes, 97 yards, and we've just kicked off the third quarter. Yeah, I thought that was an excellent point you brought up earlier on that, that drive of eight minutes and eight seconds, although 17 plays and no points, put an awful lot of pressure on that Villanova defense. Now, you know, we're theorizing now. They're terrorizing <laughs> Delaware on that play. Chris Curtis with the big penetration there on that third down play brings up a fourth down. Again, to stop the Delaware power game, you've got to have penetration. Curtis with the penetration there forces the punt. And Pat Williams certainly felt it as he was stopped dead in his tracks. Probably a gain, in, a loss, pardon me, of about one on the play. White had one punt blocked. And here they come again, Devian Logan putting pressure on a relatively short kick takes a Delaware bounce of about three and a half yards. Let's take another look at that pressure coming in on White. White back here, and Villanova seems to feel they could block punts. They blocked one, almost had another one there. Kind of a little poor acting job, but you always try that you might get the flag. <laughs> Logan come blowing through and almost got one. First down for Villanova at their own 39-yard line. Just ahead of the 38, ball at the 39. First and 10, Wildcats. Backs in the eye behind Marquez in for the injured Eric Pearson. Motion by the right tackle. Right Carl, tackle pulling out number 64. That's Kevin McCarty. 6'4, 285 pounder. Couldn't keep that big bulk in one well, position. Once it got moving backwards, he couldn't stop it. Now. Villanova's got to alter their game plan a little bit. Uh, you know, they just watch, watching the way they played that first half. Very conservative. There's Pearson with that right ankle wrapped. And he will likely not be back today. So it's Marquez, Tom Marquez, his game to win as he tosses out wide. He's got Dolbin. The red shirt freshman has a first down inside Delaware territory. A gain of 19 on the play. Terrific throw here by Tom Marquez. Sets in the pocket. You'll see this nicely from the end zone angle. Makes a play action fake inside. Sets and delivers on the corner route. Just a great throw to Dalvin. That's the kind of plays they have to make. The first down pass when you get that known coverage. Open the offense up when you can't get a goal with the running game. Josh Dalvin with the catch. This is Curtis Sifford over the right side. Sifford out of bounds at the 32-33 yard line as Villanova with two big gainers. Larry McSeed on the stop. That was Gainer Steve Shepard on the play. Pardon me, Steve Shepard. You'll see the deep delay in the back here. That Steve Shepard, number 36, does a great job of bouncing that thing outside for the first down. Villanova seems to be coming out with a purpose in their offense in this third quarter. A bit conservative in the first half, right. opening things up here to start the second. Marquez, a quick drop. Williams on the defense. A pair of fours meeting there. The well, intended receiver, Rob Carter. Paul Williams, again, the twin brother of Pat Williams for Delaware. Watch Paul Williams down quickly. Paul Williams does an outstanding job of reading the quick drop of the quarterback, driving the ball, getting an arm in there, and batting it away. That's outstanding execution by a corner, reading the drop as well as the receiver. Which also sets up the sideline and up for later on. You got it. Ask Mark McMillan. <laughs> I think he's already talked enough about that play to last him a lifetime. This is Calcet up the middle. Calcet leans towards the 25-yard line. Villanova moving the football. Deeper and deeper into Delaware territory they go. There's an injured player on the field for Villanova. And as we say that, we do not say it lightly. As we remember last year, the Delaware-Villanova game was not what it should have been, certainly from the eyes of the, of the Villanova Wildcats, because they had so many players injured. Pearson already injured today for Villanova. And we've been told that Mike Ryan has a sprained ankle. He's a junior down the shore he is a cornerback for delaware he is out with a sprained ankle there you'll see kevin mccartney right there gets a nice kick out block 
And it looked like Schlesser. Calset going through. Yeah, it was uh, Jason Slusher at 6'4", 249, falling on the, uh, on, on the back of McCarty's leg. Looks like he's up. It was the left ankle. Nobody's seen anything. It just seems to, seems to be in pain, but we won't speculate. Here we get a good shot right here. You see Calset hitting the hole. There's McCarty right there. Kicks him right in the back. Rolls it over. Hopefully it's not serious. 12.39 remaining here in the third quarter. We're just about underway. Delaware leading Villanova 7-3. McCarty helped off. He had a severe right knee sprain last year. Heard it early in the season. He was a medical redshirt, so he's still just a sophomore. 6'4", 286. Kevin McCarty being helped off, but he is putting pressure on that ankle. So that's a good sign. He's moving a little gingerly, but at least he's moving, putting some weight on it, Carl, as you said, and hopefully it, it is nothing serious. Matt McKnight, 6'7", 290-pounder out of Lansdale, also a sophomore, comes in. Third and two, facing Villanova. Third down conversions, thus one of seven for the Wildcats. This is their first chance here in the second. Rob Carter split to the top of your screen. Marquez calls out the singles. Petrillo in motion. They gave us the Cal set, and he's got a Delaware, uh, pardon me, a Villanova first down. He drives deeper in the Delaware territory. Carl, as we spoke in our opening, Cal set is going to be the key running back for Villanova. Right now, uh, they have been able to spring him loose, but they're giving him the ball more. And usually when you give a running back the ball more, he heats up a little bit. You see Calset hit this up in there. Nice job avoiding the first tackler and the second effort for the first down. Big first down for Villanova. They're driving. Calset, six carries, 30 yards thus far. Dalvin, split to the bottom of your screen. Villanova Wildcats driving over the right side and into... Delaware's 28, I'm sorry, 18-yard line. That was Curtis Sifford as I hesitated a bit trying to determine <laughs> whether it was Sifford or Steve Shepard as they both run out of the tailback position. They're both very similar size-wise, at least from here, but Se Shepard is a bit bigger. It's 6 foot 210. Sifford would have had a little more. They ran in the back of uh, Matt McKnight uh, kind of standing in the way. Get them offensive linemen moving down the field. Second and seven. Shepard the tailback behind Cal set. Quick drop. The pass intended for Finner as he ran a quick post, but the ball was deflected. Ralph D'Angelo making the play for Delaware's defense. D'Angelo with a solid play there. It was Finneran was open on the slant pattern. But you gotta like the, the, the style that Villanova's now playing. The first half, as you said, was a little bit conservative. Hey, Carl, now that now they're a little more aggressive with it, going with the play action pass on second and seven. Now brings up the third and seven. Our case three of eight for 56 yards passing, third and seven now. Trips receivers to the left. Marquez looks in the end zone. That's a Villanova touchdown as Rob Carter goes up and brings it down. His second touchdown of the season for the 5'8", 155-pounder. And that's a Villanova score. Well, that's the kind of play we looked at. We thought would be to, to, to Brian Finner and the 6'5 wide receiver. But they go to Rob Carter, the diminutive 5'8 receiver. We'll see it here. Rob Carter, number four, Marquez drops, just kind of throws the alley-oop, but he picked out the 5'8 receiver rather than the 6'5". But Rob Carter just wants the ball. He goes up over the top. It, I mean, just a terrific play. Wants it more than Derek Underwood. Comes up with a touchdown. The kick by Kiefer is good as well. Let's take one more look at it. As Tom Marquez go back... And Marquez delivers a beautiful ball at the back of the end zone. Wobbles a little, but it's very effective. Carter grabs it for the score, with the score. Villanova 10, Delaware 7, 11.04 remaining in the third. Villanova honored five former gridiron stars today. Lou Ferry, Dominic Liotta, Ed Michaels, Mike Ciani, and John Y. Saki, as you can see them up there on the DuPont Swimming Center wall. And there you can see Mike Ciani next to Jaws and some little guy somewhere. So there I am. There's my hand. Anyway, Mike, 
you made a few of those catches in the end zone during your career here, but to see Villanova football resurrected after being dark for a couple of years has to bring a smile to your face, I would imagine. It sure does, Garland. You know, it's great to see all these people back out here, too. We're seeing a good ball game. Uh, first half, as Ron said, I overheard him say, you know, a little conservative. They came out in the second half and just moved it down the field. It's great. Been easier to kick off. High and deep to Williams. He takes it at the four. Comes up the middle. Has a lane. And he takes it up to the 45-yard line. Where number 47, that is freshman linebacker Ted Kobelski with the tackle. 42-yard return. Big return. This is where special teams have to come up big. Your offense just moves down and puts you in the lead. The team's got to pin him back. That right now, the Villanova teams just didn't come up with a big play. But give all the credit to Delaware. They opened up the lane, and Pat Williams took it right up the gut. First and 10, Delaware, who they now trail for the first time in the ball game. To give us the number 30, Kai Hebron, a distant cousin of the Eagles' Vaughn Hebron. Mike, you know, it says here, October 30th, 1971. There's a few numbers next to you. Do you remember that game? I remember uh, a couple of games, Carl. Which one are you talking about? How about the one where you had 12, 12 catches, receptions, huh? 288 yards, and five touchdowns, and a 33-27 win over Xavier? I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Out in Cincinnati. Second and seven. Hebron in motion. Langan keeps it over the right side, and he's got a Delaware first down. Charles, you saw... Mike play a little bit closer than you might have liked uh, at times during your pro career. Well, he had a lot of great years out the Raiders. Of course, Mike finished his career uh, with, with the Colts when they were still in Baltimore, I guess, at the time, right, Mike? That's right. We don't right. want to date ourselves too much. I've got the <laughs> distinction of having to play for two NFL franchises that no longer exist. It's this anymore. The Oakland Raiders and Baltimore Colts. That's all right. I put a few franchises and a few leagues out of, out of business in my career. But the NASL and the World Football League. Incomplete. Langen going for about the third time this afternoon. He, he's 0 for 5 officially. He just looks un he looks uncomfortable in this pass offense. Of course, the, you know the wing tee is is run oriented. Uh, here's the misdirection play. Lang comes out. He actually has a tight end quick. He just kind of drifts a little bit, a little bit indecisive trying to get the ball to Brown on, on the clear out route underneath. But you got to be decisive as a quarterback to get the receiver, plant, and throw the ball. Don't be looking for something that's not there. Second and 10 for Delaware. At the Villanova 40. Villanova's got a loose football. And it's see you later time. Chris Curtis is going to take it in for a touchdown. As Mike Ciani applauds here in the booth, Villanova with the football and the touchdown. Delaware trying to come back after Villanova went ahead. They got a first down. Here you try the reverse. Big, big play. Villanova defense stays at home, plays the reverse, causes the fumble. Touchdown. What a turnaround. It's a 180. The first half getting yep. blown away, second half coming back. I'll tell you, Tubby Raymond said it at halftime. Same thing last week. They right. dominated the first half, only had a 10-7 lead. Same thing here. They dominated the first half, only had a 7-3 lead. They've come back. Special teams and big plays have hurt them. Mark Baker with the hit on Joe Romanelli, and Chris Curtis scoops it up and takes it in. If you're a Villanova fan, you'll like to take one more look at it. You'll see the ride to Daryl Brown. Now here comes the reverse. Langham gives it off to but not a real good exchange. Boys, it's a lineman's dream. <laughs> a dream. Oh, they'll be. With the score, Villanova 17, Delaware 7. We've got 9.43 remaining here on the main line. Minutes of the third quarter, Villanova trailing 7-3 at the half, now leading 17-7. Big plays, impact players make things happen. There was uh, Chris Curtis with the, the fumble recovery for the touchdown after a very good Villanova drive and a terrific catch by Rob Carter to put Villanova ahead. They've added to it. Now, Tubby Raymond, his offense, hey, they will be tested. See if they'll stay with that same game plan of pounding it up the middle now that they're behind. 
Coleman and Romanelli, the man who fumbled the ball away, are back to receive the kick from Frank Venezia. As a pumped up bunch of Villanova Wildcats go after him. A high kick, a little short at the five. Make it the four. Williams has it. Williams has it over the 20, to about the 24. That is Coleman. And Andy Talley had the menu set for today, didn't he? Stuffed bluehead. And he will be happy to consume considerable portions left with 9.36 remaining here in the third quarter. It is very hot. That was the first collegiate touchdown for Chris Curtis, number 94. As he accepts congratulations from just about everybody on that Villanova defensive unit. Langan runs out of trouble, and he's got a big gainer over the left side. Hardy chases him and gets him from behind. Chris Hardy, the strong safety out of Oakton, Virginia. Missed the last eight games last year with a severely strained right foot. But there you'll see Keith He's had a make, couple good plays today. Make the belly, fake the brown. Look sure the receiver wasn't there. Did the wise thing, put it under his arm. Show terrific speed getting around the corner. Made something out of nothing. Outstanding play by Langan. A gain of 32 on the play by Langan. First down, Delaware at the Villanova 45. Williams in motion. Andy Cobal on the tackle of Keith Langan. You met the Cobals at halftime. What you, you didn't meet Andy Cobal's girlfriend, who is a graduate of the University of Delaware, so I'm sure there have been a few conversations about this game. Where, 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 where is she sitting there? What side? Half on this side and half on the other. <laughs> Second and eight. Darrell Brown up to about the 40. George Freiberger, redshirt freshman, defensive tackle, 6'6", 270 pounder, with the tackle. Delaware does not change their attack. They've uh, fallen behind by 10 points. They're going to stay with their game plan. There is a lot of time left, though. 8.26 now remaining in the third period. Villanova with a 10-point lead. There's that Smith, a little bit of a scissors play inside. But Villanova there to meet it. But they came back to the line of scrimmage. Outstanding discipline by the Villanova defense. It's a counterplay coming back away from the flow. As Williams tries to put his pad back as he heads to the sideline. See everyone flows to the left, Williams back to the right, but you see the discipline of the Villanova defense. Now they're swarming. John Kowalczyk, the senior outside linebacker, makes the tackle. Langan keeps it over the left side. Incredible Hardy, confidence Debbie in your offense. Yep. <laughs> that was fourth and five. They're now five for six on fourth down. You'll see it here from the end zone. It looks like Langan wants to take this game over by himself. Excellent read there. Koba played the pitch a little bit too strong. Langan comes underneath. Big fourth and five play for the first down. First and ten for Delaware. To give it to Scott. And number 53, Preston Walker, reserve linebacker. Steps into the hole, puts helmet on helmet. And it's a gain of about three. Preston Walker with a big hit, flowing down the line. What you have to do, stick the old helmet in there. As you can see, the ball resting on the 30-yard line. Lock continues to run. The seventh play of this drive for Delaware. Coleman in motion, the give to Brown. Has a hole up the middle. And he looks to have the first down as well. A.J. Borowski down at the bottom of the pile. Debbie and Logan there as well. Carl Brown looks a little bit tired to me. He just doesn't seem to have the spring in his leg that he had earlier in the game. Hard to say that with 20 rushes for 109 yards, but doesn't seem to be hitting that hole and fighting for the extra yardage right now. Maybe it's just catching a wind on a Jim Brown. Well, this is the, this is a candidate for the, the Walter Payton Award, which is like the Heisman Trophy for one double-A. Andy Talley and the, and the Villanova coaches thought he might be a bit heavy coming in. Now, 
we're not sure. We can't tell you definitively. But if he is carrying a few extra pounds, and he, he's listed at 240 in the media guide. Well, he's, we're told he's 256, 256 now. which is 16 pounds over. When you get it on a hot and humid day like this, it could take its toll. Now, apparently last week down at William & Mary, it was another day like this, and he struggled in the second half. So conditioning obviously could be a problem today. Delaware certainly has the lead in total yards, but Villanova by 10 on the scoreboard. Tommy Raymond suggested to us, too, that his kids could not be in better shape. We we're talking about them being winded. We we're talking about them being out of shape, or at least dogging it. Not dogging it, forgive me, but just huffing and puffing here in the second half as they did at William and Mary. Well, you know, th these teams are in terrific shape. I don't think that's a, a, that's a question, but when you're talking about First start, degrees, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. When you're talking about 84 degrees and what was it, 90% humidity, I don't care what kind of shape you're in. When you're banging out there for as much as they're banging, it's going to take its toll. Okay, and in all fairness, Darrell Brown is the Delaware offense. And, and he is a banger. <laughs> Second down and 14 for the Blue Heads. Langan looking to pass. Pressure from Cobal. He throws against the grain. Logan there, and so is Dunaway. And Borowski comes over, had a shot at the interception, but it just falls incomplete. That's a tough pass to throw for a right-handed quarterback. Right, we'll see Langan coming out of here. From what it looks like behind the Villanova secondary, Langan chased by Kobaugh, just throws up a hope and a prayer. He's actually got a shot. But here comes the Villanova secondary. You see Doug Flower leap high for that, couldn't come up with the play. And from behind Langan, what he sees, he sees Kobaugh, number one, moves out. Very, very difficult throw. Heck of an effort. Flower tries to come up with it. Incomplete. Wants to throw again. Has his man Flower, but he can't catch it in his hands. Can't throw it any better than that. Flower's got to come up with that catch. So Flower probably noticed something. The Delaware coaches noticed something. Flower had his man beaten. Another fourth down coming up. 5-19 remaining in the third quarter. This time they're going to kick it. Sean Leach out there. This will be a 42-yarder. It's up. And it's good. Now I know why he gave that kid a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> With the score, Villanova 17, Delaware 10. We've got 5-15 remaining in the third. We spent a lot of time here talking about Andy Kobaugh and the Villanova Wildcats perspective. We mentioned earlier his girlfriend, Lisa Grimley, went to Delaware. Bill Purry has her perspective. Bill? All right, thank you very much, Carl. Lisa is a Delaware graduate, 1994, a communications major. How has it been communicating with Andy after Delaware beat Villanova these last four meetings? Well, Andy's pretty good about it. His friends, do it, you know, it's tough when they lose, but they're, they're really good, and this year, hopefully, we won't have to worry about them losing. So. Villanova has the uh, seven-point lead. Uh, you have any mixed emotions watching this game, or is it real easy to root for Villanova? Or maybe root pretty, for Delaware. <laughs> it's been pretty easy. I'm used to it. The last uh, five years, I've been rooting for Villanova. You know, I was at Delaware. And so when you were I in mean, school, you had to take some uh, some, some reps, huh? Yeah, I wear my Villanova shirt around campus and get them all mad. All right, well, life is short. Play hard, and uh, thanks for joining us, Lisa. All right, back to you guys upstairs. Words to live by for Curtis Sifford as he takes it out to the 36-yard line, Bill. Thank you very much. So we have equal time for the males, the females, the Wildcats, and the Blue Hens. Here on Fox 29, we cover it all. <laughs> we do have official word on Eric Pearson. It is a mild concussion, and he will most likely not return here this afternoon for Villanova. It's Tom Marquez's game to win. And that touchdown he threw to Rob Carter helped put him in the lead. Shepard with the carry over the right side on first down for the Cats. <laughs> Philly, Philly football. football. Funny how they spell that. I like that. Very creative in the trial. Who's in that number three there seems spot? seems to be something there. missing, though, that George. three spot. And the winner is? 
Won't be the winner. Won't be the, the bronze medal winner. Really. Oh, it's the Eagles. I oh, can see that. I don't it's in a see different that. color type. Oh, they're a hard to, to tell on our try, monitor. They're trying to trick me. Is that uh, it? We're, they're trying to say the Eagles aren't as aren't as good as a couple of football teams, huh? Marquez out to hunt. That play is designed to develop a little quicker than that. Mike Sai on the tackle of Eric Hunt. Today's game is brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Delaware. Whatever life brings, they'll be there for you. Third down and three now. Just inside four minutes remaining in the third quarter. As Eric Hunt steps it up over the sideline. 5'10", 195 pounder out of Ohio. We talked about the California connection. There are 11 Ohioans on this Villanova Wildcat roster as well. Marquez, quick drop, overshoots Carter. Now Delaware is a bit more, more conventional. They got most of their kids are from Pennsylvania. 35 Pennsylvanians, 32 from New Jersey, and 23 from the home state of Delaware comprise the Blue Hen roster. Andy Talley here at Villanova has gone outside of the area and he's brought back some excellent football players to help rebuild his football program. And easier to punt it away. A high spiral coming down around the 18-yard line. Williams has it, looking for that wall to the left. But the Villanova pursuit has him at around the 17-yard line, a punt of 13, 9 yards, 39 yards, Brian Barajas with the stop. As we state the facts, as you can see, Pennsylvania well represented, as is New Jersey, but Ohio and California, 19 players between them. Of course, you got four. Andy did four players out of Delaware as well, which I'm sure didn't make Tubby very happy. <laughs> Conversely, Delaware has 35 from Pennsylvania, 32 from Jersey, and 23 from the home state of Delaware. Flower had it in his hand momentarily as Langan, looking long, again, cannot connect with Flower. Delaware going for the big play. You'll see Flowers singled up here on, on the lower part of the screen. Going to the post. Langham back splits the safety. Had an opportunity for the big catch. Didn't come up with it. Made one heck of an effort. He split for Ahas and Hardy. He could not come up with the football. Second and ten at the Delaware 17-yard line. Williams in motion. Langan keeps. He's got a blocker. Brown in front didn't block anybody. Langan cuts it up and he's got a first down. Langan's making a lot of plays. I think when everyone starts to focus on Brown, it, it opens up things just outside the tackle, the perimeter area. Langan's taking advantage of that. 15 rushes, 75 yards. Delaware offense. More than 200 yards on the ground thus far this afternoon. Still plenty of time to go. Langan for his tight end, Rob Higby. He pulls it down. And it looks like it might be good for another first down. You'll see the senior, Rob Higby, make the catch here. Langham drops off the play action, just enough to freeze the linebacker. Higby goes up, makes a terrific catch. You know, what a hit he took there from, from Kyle Kelton. Here's the Higby from Linwood, New Jersey, with a great catch right there. First and 10, Blue Hens at the 42. Langham fakes, keeps, and gets it away to Darrell Brown. So Langan now getting a little momentum going. George Freiberger on the stop. But Keith Langan, Jaws, has done an excellent job eluding the rush here. A gain of 15 to his fullback, Darrell Brown. And he certainly has, and you'll see the play right here. Langan comes back again. Almost everything they do is off some sort of play action. Hold the linebackers. Comes out of the naked bootleg. There's the pressure. He steps up. Stays in the pocket, does a great job of unloading the ball. I have no idea how he got it out, but certainly a terrific job. First and 10 at the Villanova 44. Flags are down. The pitch to Coleman. Barajas there, as is Logan on the stop for Villanova. 
Well, you didn't know how he got it there. We'll go back. Yeah, let's get a look. I'd Just like for to see you, that. Joyce. I, I like when quarterbacks make terrific, terrific plays like this. Here he comes out again, puts it on the hip, the naked bootleg, looks downfield for the deep route, not there. Bam! Oh, baby. Oh, this is terrific. That's terrific. Penalty on the offense. Remo Carl. excited again. Carl wants to see guys make plays like that in that quarterback position. Ball brought back to midfield. Now first and 15 for Delaware. Delaware has been penalized five times for a total of 38 yards. Frazier just playing the whistle <laughs> as he just plants the flower. I felt that one up here and it didn't feel very good. You're, su you're supposed to <laughs> plant seeds and watch flowers grow. This one, this flower is buried on this one. Well, laying him on the roll, he rifles this one in there. Big, strong arm. Flower make the catch here. Nice job of getting his numbers down to the ball. And here comes Frazier. He has been all over the field that time a hair late. A gain of 13 on the play. Second down and two for Delaware. To give inside to Kai Hebron. And he's close to a first down, and he has it. A.J. Borowski on the tackle with an assist from Frazier. Hardy and <laughs> Frazier. Frazier. Delaware, 19 first downs to Villanova's five, but the Wildcats holding on to a 17-10 lead with a minute left to go in the third quarter. First and 10 at the Villanova 33. The seventh play, seventh play is thus far 50 yards on this drive. Another pass to the tight end Higby. So now Delaware opening it up. Debbie and Logan on the stop. By the way, Carl, that is two passes caught by the tight end today. Yesterday we were talking about this game. We were going to make a, a friendly little wager on how many of the tight ends we're going to catch. Here's Higby with his second of the day. What a big target. Six foot six, 260 pounds. Out of my old buddy John Spagnola, who's worked with you a little bit. Higby makes that same kind of catch. He threw it a few times to Spags. Did he always hold on like that? Every time. Every time. I stuck it in his chest. <laughs> First and 10, 20 seconds remaining in the third. Brown goes over the left side for a short game as the clock continues to wind down towards the end of the third. Chris Curtis on the tackle. the third quarter. Villanova holding on to that 17-10 lead, but Delaware is driving. We'll be back with the fourth right after this. Jamar morning. It is terrific. Fast paced, all up to date. And the network pregame show followed by the Eagles and the Packers and the postgame show as well. All on Fox 29 for you tomorrow. On Fox 29 this afternoon, Villanova and Delaware through three quarters. The Cats leading by seven. Delaware still leading on the stat sheet, though, Joss. Oh, my goodness. Look at those numbers. 302 total yards for Delaware, 144 for Villanova. Time of possession almost doubled by Delaware, yet the most important stat, 17-10, Villanova leads Delaware. That's the only one that matters. Darrell Brown with the carry on the previous play, third and four. They're looking for him again. He's got it as he cuts back, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Delaware. That is a fullback at 246, 56 pounds, whatever he is. Listed at 240, they got him at 256. Gets out on the perimeter. Look at his cutback move. A guy 256 pounds. Don't get in my way, baby, because I'm going to the end zone, and he does. Darrell Brown. Well, let's see. Uh, Delaware's going to go for the tie here. Tyrone Frazier tried to get in his way, but Brown ran through the tackle. At this point after, we could have a tie ball game. And it is good. Sean Leach ties it up. Daryl Brown gave him the touchdown to bring him even. We'll get a look at the play that tied it up. Here you see Lang come out in the option. Kind of surprising, the, the, the quick pitch out to Brown. He's usually the belly guy. 
cuts back inside off the hit of Frazier into the end zone. Great block by Lynn Pine to spring him to Villanova, 17, Delaware, 17, 14, 20 to remain here in the fourth. Ten plays, 83 yards, time of possession. Quick, huh? For Delaware, four minutes and three seconds. Darrell Brown takes it in from 15 yards out. We've got ourselves a tie ball game. Sean Leach kicks it away. Kyle Helton with a head of steam up to the 25 and no further. All right, Jaws, here we go. The Yankee Conference plays overtime, one of a relative few conferences in the country. You're going to explain it. Well, number one, it's not sudden death. Each team will get a chance to score. They'll get the ball at the 25-yard line, which is really the difference. Each team will get one timeout. Now, if the team scores first, hey, if they get a field goal, a touchdown, or whatever, the other team will get a chance to come back and tie the game, and we may go to a second overtime period. There has been one game here at Villanova. There were six overtimes. A little too confusing for me. Let's see somebody win it here outright. And Villanova trying to do it. The pass from Marquez to Dalvin has a first down. Boy, Marquez did a terrific job there, stepping up in the pocket, delivering a perfect stripe, strike out to Dalvin on the sideline. You'll see it right here. Marquez pulling out for center with, with the fake. The zipper sets up nicely with the pressure. Perfect throw right on the numbers to Dalvin. First down. Josh Dalvin, whose nickname is Forrest Gump. Why, you ask? Because he can just remember that, that scene in the movie where Forrest Gump runs onto the field at Alabama and just runs past everybody? Well, Josh Dalvin is the fastest guy on the Villanova team. Offense, five yards I like this inside stuff, down. you know? It's a combination of the Villanova coaches and Bill Wine helping us with that. Here you see Roz jump a little bit. Uh, they're getting a little antsy, but at least they want to come off the ball. Villanova now penalized four times for 20 yards. First and 15 for the Wildcats. With Elder in motion to the top of your screen. They give us the Cal set. Isolated. Fumbles the ball, and it's a live football, and Delaware has it. Anthony Calset fumbles it away to Kenny Bailey. And Delaware has the football in Villanova territory. His second fumble of the game, his fourth of the year, Calset. They're featured back, but there was some trepidation on the part of the Villanova staff whether or not he would hold on to the football if given it as often as they hope to. Well, you can't turn the football over. When you get in traffic like that, you got to wrap it up with two hands. If Kenny Bailey can stay in bounds, he would score on that play. But Cal has got to wrap the ball up when you get in traffic. The turnovers are even. The score is even. 17-17 here in the fourth quarter. Langan has the football. Langan pitches, and Coleman runs out of space to move. Norman Coleman, the pitch man, control there by Langan got it off at the very latest moment he could and Norman Coleman takes it deep we talked about Langan earlier taking control of this game here's a good example of how he's doing it really stretches the defense to the last second makes the pitch you can't do any better than that this guy's really taking the game over the defense is keying on Brown Langan's making the plays now watch the bottom of your screen that's the wide side Coming back again, this is Williams. As they come down, the pitch to Williams coming to the bottom of your screen. As he cuts back, he fumbles the ball, and Mark Baker falls on top of it. Baker with his second big play in this football game. We got a wild one here, Carl. More, more football games are lost than are won. The turnovers can kill you. Here, Delaware is going to take the lead. The ball is stripped. No one seems to know that it's gone. Well, as you running can see, back Williams, Williams, Williams knows it's gone. Williams tried to change it from his right hand to his left hand and never got control of it once he did. So Villanova takes over at the 27-yard line. Marquez runs into Sippard, and McSee has him for a big loss. As you can hear the 
crowd getting into it from both sides here at Philadelphia Stadium. To our left, you can see the Wildcat and the Blue Hen mascots first fighting, now dancing together with the cheerleaders. Well, just a mix-up in the back here there between Sifford and, and Marques, and it obviously hurt him badly, a 10-yard loss on the play. Again, you got your backup quarterback in there now. Guys that probably have not gotten a lot of work together, you're going to have breakdowns like that. There are breakdowns and there are turnovers. There's times out, but it's a lot of fun watching this game here today. With the score, Villanova 17, Delaware 17, 13 minutes, 2 seconds remaining here at Villanova Stadium. 17, Delaware and Villanova, 13.02 remaining here. Second and 20 for the Wildcats. Marquez steps up, has Carter, and he had Fitterin as well. Brian Fitterin was open about eight yards deeper than that. I'm not sure Marquez threw to Carter. Well, Carter coming underneath. They had Fitterin going down through the middle clearing. You see him right here. Then Carter comes underneath. Just a little bit out of his reach at five foot eight. Finneran may have had it, but that's the one you got to hit. They did a nice job. Finneran coming under to clear that out. Carter coming back underneath. Marquez needed to hit that one. Good design of the play. Poor execution. Third down for Villanova. Just three of ten this far. They need one here to keep it going. Trips receivers to the left. Marquez in the pocket. Has Finneran, but it's intercepted by Lenz. Sean Lenz still on his feet. Brought down from behind. Another turnover. Delaware takes over at the Villanova 20. Sean Lenz, the sophomore out of CB East. 19 tackles last week against William and Mary. An interception today against Villanova. We'll see Marquez dropping the puck here out of the shotgun. Good pass protection. Tries to force the ball down the field. You can see Lenz with a great drop underneath Finneran deep down the field, knowing it's third and 20 yards to go. Lenz does a terrific job of undercutting the receiver. This is fine linebacker play. Not a real smart decision uh, by Marquez. When you get that linebacker that deep, take the receiver underneath. Hey, if you don't get the first down, punt it, but, but don't give him the turn turnover. Oh, there goes Mascots again. Just having so much fun along the sidelines. part of college football. What was the Youngstown State mascot? Well, you, now you're going to start, right? What was their mascot? Well, first, before I say that, let me say we were the two, two out of three the last three years national champions. All right, we were the Penguins. And I want a real tough name. <laughs> you know, I mean, but it's, it's fun. It's fun. Penguins are fluffy. They're we actually had a, we, we had a live penguin on the sideline. Yeah. Now, can you imagine a day like this, what this penguin would be doing on the sideline? <laughs> He'd be using some of those He'd be using the, 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 the old style over there with Bill Ferry. <laughs> Delaware with a chance to take the lead now. Darryl Brown goes through the middle for a gain of about two. And Villanova defense has to step up now. Chris Curtis and Andy Kobaw did on that play. A gain of about two. Second and eight for Delaware. Darryl Brown up to 133 yards now. Still 12 minutes and 15 seconds remain here at Villanova. Delaware led early. Villanova took the lead. Now we're tied. Langan, pressure from behind. Mark Baker comes and gets him for a loss of about three. Well, on that play, you would think that the Villanova defense was in the Delaware huddle. They, they total disrespect for Darryl Brown coming up the middle. You see, really, no one bites on the fake to him, and here comes the pursuit. Three, four, five Delaware defenders. Great job of stretching the field. Pretty good job of scouting, too, because they saw the off-guard Shannon Trossel pull. And that's probably a key for those linebackers to stay home. Well, Dan McNeil felt that he had a good game plan for this defense. There were some, some keys that they could follow that would be efficient, but Delaware always crosses you up. Third and 11. The fake to Brown. He's got Courtney Bates. Courtney Bats, excuse me, open in the end zone, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Courtney Bats wins it, and Villanova.
Villanova now trails after that 21-yard reception by freshman Courtney Batts out of Penn Charter High School. The Interact Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Well, we, we, we got a good angle this one. You see Langan on the fake, sets in the pocket, has the one-on-one -on -one coverage to Bat. Great throw right on the numbers. Beats the one-on-one -on -one coverage. The coverage wasn't bad. The throw was perfect. Sean Leach now after Courtney Batts and Keith Langan have combined to put Delaware ahead. Leach with the point after Delaware. 24, Villanova 17 with 11, 21 remaining. Don't go anywhere yet. Blue Hens of Delaware have scored the last 17 unanswered. They now lead it 24-17. Here's the last contribution to that. You'll see Langan with the play fake to Brown. Sets that play fake holds the linebackers, allows you to get the single coverage. The throw is right on the money to bats for the touchdown. Langan hangs in the pocket, does a nice job, but it's the constant pounding of Brown up the middle that allows you to get that single coverage. There they were finally able to take advantage of it. I'm talking about Delaware. And in all fairness, as you suggested earlier, George, Dunaway not in bad shape. The ball was just laid out there perfectly. Very good position. You can't you can't ask a cornerback to cover a wide receiver all over the field. If you don't get that linebacker help underneath, it makes it very difficult. But the linebackers are keying on Brown. Leach kicks it away. This is Petrillo, Pete Petrillo. That's the best field position they've had to work with. Villanova here as Kenny Bailey makes the stop. Off a kickoff return. Villanova will put it into play at their own 36-yard line, trailing by seven. I'm Carl Chirk along with Ron Jaworski and Bill Perry here at Villanova Stadium as Andy Talley and the Villanova Wildcats had the lead. 17-7, but again, 17 unanswered points. Petrillo with a 30-yard return. Marquez the throw. Out to Calcet, so they get him involved quickly after he fumbled it away. Yeah, Calcet has been kind of a, a, a non-factor today, and we all thought that he would be one of the keys. He hasn't been getting the ball much on the running game. They've got it to him a couple times in the perimeter of the passing game. The fumble he had earlier obviously hurt Villanova. Gain of five on that pass completion. Marquez to Calcet, Darrell Green on the tackle. I like the play call, though, on first down. Finneran was open over the middle, but he took the positive play. Second and five for Villanova. Marquez rolling. He has Dalbin. I want you to take a look, Darrell Green on the coverage. I want you to take a look on the next play. Number 20, Kenny Bailey, the free safety for Delaware, is a good 15 to 18 yards deep. And it's hard to throw long against that. Well, that play there, he, he had Calcet in the flat. That time he elected to the Dolbin on the, on the corner route coming out of the slot. Uh, tough throw when you're on the run. It'd be accurate with that kind of, that, that throw to the deep sideline. The two safeties, a full 15 yards deep, 35. Going over, trying to go long. He's got a man open. That's Carter. No flags on the play. The first down for Villanova. Well, he beat number 24, Mike Sy. One-on-one -on -one coverage, so the, the safeties as deep as they were. Well, they're right there. The Carl, Carl, they're in a two-deep zone, and you'll see it from the, from the quarterbacks looking at right here. Those safeties have to cover the whole wide side of the field. Villanova over, runs the receiver down the middle. That opens up the play. There's the guy. You got that safety. Can't cover both of them. Boy, I'll tell you, Marquez threw a rope on there. What a terrific play. Gain of 42 yards on the play. First down, Villanova. At the Delaware 17, backs in the eye behind Marquez. They give us the Cal set. One man to beat, and he hangs on. Dennis Hulme out of Richboro, Pennsylvania, my neck of the woods, from Bucks County. Dennis makes the stop on Anthony Calcet who carries him for five yards and it's second and five. Didn't look like much but second and five is where you want to be. Again the backs in the eye. It looks blitz here. Shepard the tailback behind Calcet. The give is to Calcet. Eight of about three. That'll bring up a third and about 
two or three. Check the spot. Just about two. Third and two for Andy Talley. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> a lot of time, Andy. A lot of time. Of the face of that <laughs> Third and two. They give us the cow set. Big hole to the right side. Touchdown, Villanova. Set. Goes into the end zone almost untouched. Give the credit to McCarty, Weidel, Benzea, Ramirez, Ross. They blew away the Delaware defensive line of linebackers. Calcet for the touchdown untouched. Give the offensive line all the credit. And I'm sure Anthony Calcet will. Mark Kiefer to attempt the point after out of the hole of Marquise. This will tie it. It's up, and it is good. So we are even here at Villanova Stadium. After this run by Anthony Calcet, the offensive line just controlled the line of scrimmage. Calcet dances to the right and into the end zone, untouched until Derek Underwood puts a little bit of helmet and shoulder That's pad. The guy you want to be touched by, your own guy. 24-24, the score. 9:07 remaining here at Villanova Stadium. Pretty good football game. Huh? We got a terrific ball game here. stadium has come alive here. This tradition in Villanova continues to be rebuilt. It was a dark day when, in fact, the program went dark some 11, 13, about 13, 14 years ago now. Mike Shiani alluded to that, how excited he was to see football back at Villanova, a winning program. Andy Talley, Gene DiFilippo have done a great job with this program. They've been terrific to us all week here at Villanova, access to players, practices. They're making renovations in the stadium, the locker room, the scoreboard, you name it. Uh, Villanova's doing it right, and uh, we thank them for the courtesy they've accorded us here, Carl. They've been, they've been very nice to us. Well, Villanova's on the move, and of course, Fox 29 is on the move as well. We'll be bringing you some Villanova basketball games, Big East games here on Fox 29 this coming winter. And I don't mean to slight the, uh, Tubby Raymond and the, uh, the Delaware staff. They have also been just as nice to us, and we're very appreciative of them. Short kickoff. Joe Romanelli takes it up to about the 23-yard line and no further. Cal set a nine-yard touchdown run, six plays, 64 yards. Time of possession, two minutes, 14 seconds. The key play, Marquez to Carter, 42 yards. And, of course, Petrillo set it up with that 30-yard kickoff return. Anthony Cal set it has a touchdown at least one anyway in every game even though he fumbled that one away he helped get him equal here 24 24. the pitch to coleman kyle helton shows up very quickly and stops it for a loss so it looks like there was open spaces there, but the Villanova defense closed on it quickly. Again, and that pursuit is something that I think the Delaware coach is going to have to look at. I, I, I'm quite sure that Delaware has the option and then the pass off of that play. And the way this Villanova defense is pursuing the pass downfield off the option might be there. In fact, I think it will be there. And if their coaches are doing what I'm doing, they're going to be looking for it. How about a reverse? Now, they stopped the last one. Remember the last reverse is a fumble? Okay, so we won't, right? 8.24 <laughs> remaining in the fourth quarter. They give on the pitch to Marvell Scott. And he has a gain of about three or four. Chris Hardy on the stop, the strong safety. Jim DiLorenzo, the sports information director, making sure that everybody is up on the Yankee Conference history overtime policy. Jim, I didn't do a good enough job when I did that. that was <laughs> Third down and six for Delaware. I've been humbled before, Carl. I can handle that from Jim. Haven't we all? <laughs> Trips to the right side. The whistle. Dying on the play. It's 
against Delaware, so that'll make it third and 11 now. 8-12 remaining. Five yard penalty, still third down. Thank you so much. Tubby spoke at halftime about the, his young football team, uh, mistake prone, error prone, and really they haven't stopped themselves today, but their mistakes have hurt them. Ty Hebron brings in the play. Third and down for Delaware. Third and 11. Baker with some pressure. Langdon throws it out to Bats. And Hardy comes over and makes the stop. Chris Hardy reacts very, very quickly and makes the tackle on Courtney Bats. So Hardy Delaware doesn't make that to tackle. Away. First down. Nice stop. And this entire Villanova secondary, Helton, Logan, Hardy, Dunaway, they all, and Barajas too, plays a lot. They come up very, very strong. They're very active. Hardy making a very key tackle there. White's pass, a low one, could be returned. But Petrillo, a little bit indecisive, just covers it. 24-24, the score, Villanova and Delaware tied with 7-24 remaining. Back to live action here at Villanova. 7-08 remaining, the Wildcats and the Blue Hens tied at 24. Carl, that shot showed there the mass substitution being done by, Bill, by Villanova. And Craig Johnson, their offense coordinator, likes to get the right people in the right situation. If someone runs a good post, they put them in to run the post. If they run a good hook, they run them in to get the hook. That's a mass substitution if I've ever seen one. Marquez looking long, intended for Dalvin, fighting with Underwood, and it falls incomplete. Underwood in good position. Dalvin didn't have a chance to run under it as Marquez's throw fluttered out there. Now you'll see the end of this play. That ball is, uh, as we used to call them, a wounded duck. It's just fluttering down, uh, throwing into the wind a little late with the throw. Dalvin made a heck of an effort to try to make the catch. Marquez would like to have that one back. Ball went about 50 yards in the air. Needed to go about 60, though. That ball been run under it. Well, I've had some ugly touchdown passes. <laughs> the ends justify the means. Shepard with a little pitch from Marquez and a first down for Villanova. In all fairness, when we're talking about Marquez's pass fluttering out there, he is the backup. He gets less repetitions during the course of the, the week. That, He's done a terrific He's job. Done a good job. You'll yes, see him has. right here. I mean, this is the third and six. He's patient in the pocket. Goes to his check down man, Shepard. Does a terrific job of avoiding the first tackler, picking up the first down. Marquez made that play happen. A lot of poise and presence in the pocket. He learned from his mistake earlier, forcing the ball. Even Andy's happy. <laughs> He's not smiling yet, though. Marquez with a quick drop intended for Finneran. Finneran made a great grab with one hand, brings it in. The freshman with a one-hand grab, Brian Fender. And remember that name, folks. This kid is going to be an excellent receiver. A 27-yard connection from Marquez to Finneran. you've got to look at this. Look at this catch by Finneran. One hand, one foot inbounds. Incredible. This is a freshman, folks. And yesterday at practice, we were watching. They do a one-handed catching drill. Now we know why they do it. Finneran, one-handed, one foot inbounds. All you need in collegiate football. Look at that. That's one for the highlight, Bill. Give to Cal Set. 5.55 remaining. Andrew on the tackle. Gain of just one, maybe, maybe two. Second and eight for the Wildcats. Another first down, and they should be in field goal territory for Kiefer. Slot to the right. Marquez rolling right, has Petrillo down to the 20-yard line. Morel Green on the stop. 5.25 remaining. Tubby Raven trying to figure out how to stop the Villanova offense. 
Covey looks a little concerned right now. This has been a very effective drive by Villanova, mixing up the run and the pass, as well as the play action. He's got Delaware on the ropes a little bit right now. Does Craig Johnson in the Villanova defense. First and ten, backs in the eye behind Marques. Slot to the left. He gives the Calset. Calset has his helmet stripped off. Flag comes in. Anthony Calset quickly over the left side. A gain of about 10. And we'll find out what the penalty is. Could tack some more yardage onto that as well. And Kingsbury. Russ Kingsbury, the reserve fullback, just tossed his helmet to Calset. Calset has great vision. Great vision. Bounces outside of a play designed to hit over the guard. Face mask, five yard penalty, added on to the end of the run. First down. Watch Kenny Bailey, number 20, come into your screen. And grabs him across the face right there and rips the helmet off his head. It's first down for Villanova at the five. All kinds of plays. Curtis Shippard with the carry. Let's find out what this is all about. Probably too many men in the field. When those flags come from the back, Judge, see, they can count to 12 of them guys out there. They're, those officials are, are re really good. They must have gone to Youngstown. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Tubby Raymond has a young football team. They went to the quarterfinals in 1AA last year. Some thrilling games, a 49-48 game against Montana, I think it was. Defense had 12 men on the field. That's Turn cheap. on from the end of the run, half a distance, repeat first down. Tubby Raymond is trying to not necessarily rebuild, but retool on the go. He's got some pretty good football players, guys he think will be a lot better come October. Well, when you play your arch rival, they better be ready. You got it. I think uh, Andy might, says it on the schedule. <laughs> Andy might be happy he, he got him early. Eric Pearson, the quarterback, injured early, now has no cold, wet towel on his head, no ice on his ankle. He's okay watching Tom Marquez engineer this drive to try and go ahead. The give to Cal Set. Cal Set hit first. At the line of scrimmage, then backs in for the touchdown. Anthony Calset stopped at the line of scrimmage, keeps going, and he's in the end zone for the go-ahead score. Calset, who we thought would be the key player in this ball game, is now coming up big at crunch time. Sean Lenz gets him first, but then Anthony Calset makes <laughs> Andy Talley and his staff and all those Villanova Wildcats, happy as they can be. Anthony Calset, 12 carries, 54 yards, and two touchdowns. And Villanova has the lead once again. Keeper's point after is good. Villanova, as the scoreboard blinks on and off, let those Wildcat fans know that with 438 remaining, the Cats have the lead once again, 31-24. Carl, I know the people in Delaware Valley are big professional football fans, but after watching this game, I tell you, you're not going to get much better quality of football, exciting football, hard-hitting, fans into the ball game. Boy, when you get a chance, go out and support Villanova, go out and support Delaware. They're two terrific teams, well-coached, two terrific programs. I'm excited just being part of this broadcast. Well, once again, back-to-back -back seasons, George. You've been a part of this broadcast. Happy to have you a part of the team. Man, I'm getting pumped, you know? Don't get me near that field, though. Well, you know, just keep keep it going, because you got to have a lot of momentum. you gotta, you got to keep it going until <laughs> noon tomorrow. Game day live at 11.30. Just, you know, All right, he's I gotta, into i got to chill out a little. Huh? Just a little bit. Then fire up again tomorrow morning. That real football stuff. You know, the, the pads are popping. You know, we hear it up here. The guys are sweating. A couple of them bleeding out there. This is football. Eight plays, 71 yards. Of pumping and bleeding. <laughs> Two minutes, 46 seconds, the time of possession as the Villanova Wildcats have once again regained the lead. This is an 
increase his kicker speed, kind of alter the height of the Can't do that anymore in the National Football League. They've limited to one inch, so you can't get that hang time. But the collegiate can still do it. And there's good hang time. Uses that bigger tee, gets it down to the five. Pretty good hang time. This is Williams. That was Williams. <laughs> and he stopped short of the 25-yard line. Brian Barajas on the tackle. Uh, number three. Turn, face mask, five yard penalty on the kicking team. First down. You see right at the end of the play, right there, there's the face mask. Ooh, I'm surprised you only gave him five yards. That looked like a uh, like a big one. Probably thought it was an inadvertent face mask. Only five yards. Only 432 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Villanova. Langan. Gives it to Brown with a head of steam, but that Villanova pursuit stops him as he crosses the 35. Kyle Helton at the bottom of the pile, as well as A.J. Borowski. The first time they ran that play with Brown as, as, as the pitch man, he ran it in for a touchdown. That was the second time they used it. You know, they're going to want to try to get his big frame going north and south with, this, with the clock running down like it is. They need big plays. Four minutes remain here at Villanova. Second and four for the Delaware Blue Hens. Coleman in motion. The give us to Brown up the middle. And Brown has a Delaware first down. Andy Cobal on the tackle. We will keep you apprised of the, of the clock just about every play now as it winds down here in the fourth quarter. Delaware will likely keep it on the ground. That's their bread and butter. 3.35 remain. Just when you say that, they'll probably throw a pass <laughs> now, right? First and 10, Delaware at the 42. Langan with the option. He picked the wrong option. He tosses it back to Coleman and Tyrone Frazier there to make the stop. The clock is now Delaware's biggest enemy. They, you know, they can't look for those five-yard plays and one of those long drives. And you got three minutes left in the ball game. You got to start getting the ball down the field. They need a touchdown to tie or have a chance to go for two and win. A loss of two on the play. Second down and 12. 2.53 remain. Langan throwing back. Blockers in front. Pursuit. And Williams goes out of bounds. Play very well conceived by Delaware. A couple blockers out in front of Pat Williams. Chris Hardy again with excellent pursuit for Villanova. Carl, you said it. A well-designed play. Off the play action fake. Rolls his left. Langan does. Got Williams off the screen nicely. This was real close to breaking. Flower with a nice block to help seal it off. Going over coaches over there to try and help the referees. Oh, they sure were. <laughs> <laughs> 237 remaining here. Delaware with the football. The Delaware offense, the wing tee, is, is, is magnificent by design. As a defense, you see so many different looks. They force you to defend the whole field. As we've seen throughout this game, they roll left, they come right, they roll right, they come left. They trap the middle, they draw, they shovel pass. I mean, they have the complete package within his offense. You see, Keith Langan has thrown the ball pretty well today. 7 to 15, 88 yards and one touchdown. He has also ran the ball very efficiently. Second down and three. Direction, third down and three. To give us to Brown. No, it's not. I'm making a lot of corrections. <laughs> Keith Langan faked me out. I, I thought that fake. wing tee goes everywhere. <laughs> I bought the fake. Third and three, I thought they'd give it to Brown. Let's see if we can find out what really happened. Here we see Langan with the belly option. Hits it right up in there. Was looking for the first down and got it. 2.20 remains. Tyrone Fraser with another hit. 
Ball at the Villanova 46. The fake to Brown. Langan has it. Breaks one tackle. Gets down to about the 40. Sophomore Curtis Dunaway on the stop. Here's your Langan. The belly fake. Comes back. Good penetration. He makes this on his own. He got five, but it was uh, all five were on Langan. Some tired young men out there right now. Only 140 remaining to be played here in the fourth quarter. Langan back to pass. He's got flower and bats, but Helton had it in his hands and dropped it. Kyle Helton in great position. Should have made that interception, but did not. From the end zone, we see Langan coming back. It's a very slow developing play. They're running the streak down the sideline. And then a corner pattern by the inside receiver, Flower. He falls down. It's kind of the alley-oop play. Good position by the Villanova secondary. The eighth play of this drive is a third down and four for Delaware. Brown takes it up the middle. Villanova's defensive guys holding on to Darrell Brown as the ball gets down inside the 35 with 128 remaining. Greg Ziegler credited with that tackle. Fifty-five points between Villanova and Delaware, I'm told, is the third highest scoring game. The 28th meeting between these two teams. Maybe we should go over those uh, tie-break area, overtime rules again. <laughs> That's your job, buddy. <laughs> nah, they'll go for two. They'll go for two. I would imagine, Tony. Yeah, I mean, well, wait. not necessarily. Why don't we wait and find That's out? That's right. <laughs> Why speculate? I want to thank Rich Frasia here with the statistics today. Bill Friel, our spotter, Paul Luongo in the truck with all the numbers and all the coordinating calls done all week. Thank you very much. Well, these guys are awesome. Oh, Scott Pacetti. Thank you all, gentlemen. God, give him a standing ovation here. Only because we've been standing. <laughs> They were terrific. They make this job so much fun, giving us all them good shots and all that good inside information. First and ten at the 34 for Delaware. Flower split to the bottom of your screen. Langan dumps it off to Darrell Brown. And he takes it down to the 25-yard line. As the clock continues to run, 1.15 remaining. Tyrone Frazier on the stop. Villanova playing to prevent, rushing four, playing four underneath and three deep. Williams in motion, Langan. Bats with the catch at the 15-yard line. Another first down. 58 seconds remaining. Curtis Dunaway on the stop. Again, in the Yankee Conference, they do play overtime. We will unravel the very complicated overtime scenario for you if we get that far. 58 uh, seconds remaining. Uh, <laughs> Ball on the 15-yard line. Bats and Flower split to the right. The pass for Coleman, and he stumbles into the end zone. Touchdown, Delaware. Tubby goes for two. Let's see it. That's my call right now. He plays to win. Let's see what happens. Now look like filling over through the coverage. You can't leave a guy open in the flat like that in the 15-yard line with a game on the line. A 15-yarder. Langan to Coleman. You'll see the end of the play here. Coleman dives in the end zone. But no one out on the flat to really uh, contest the pass out there. Gave him a, not only the catch, but a lot of room to turn up the field. Josh. Delaware, chance to tie it, chance to win it. Now, Tubby may have listened to you. He's called the timeout. All right, Cross. He Where plays the win. He's got, he's got Langan over there with him. They've called a timeout here for this two-point conversion try. They're at the 32-yard line. 
Tubby Raymond talking to Keith Langan, discussing what they're going to run here. He did that for us so we don't have to go over those overtime uh, uh, rules again. I like that. Thanks, Tubby. Thank you very much, Tubby. Yes, indeed. And, and you know what's interesting, too, here is you know Villanova is talking about watching Daryl Brown wherever he goes. Let's get a look at that touchdown again, see if they can run that baby up. You see it right here. Oh, Flower comes in, makes a nice little pick move inside. Oh, they jump him. That's what opened up the flat, turned up the field. Touchdown, and they go for two. You gotta love this. This is college football at its best. 51 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Now Villanova calls a timeout. Okay, let's check Andy out and see what he's going to be doing over there. Three yards. One play will determine 59 minutes and nine seconds of terrific football. This is a big play for Villanova in as much as it's their first Yankee Conference game. They'll have a lot of momentum if they win. They'd be 3 and 0. For Delaware, not a desperate situation, but then again, they lost their opener last week. They're 0 and 1 in the Yankee Conference. Two losses in conference for Delaware could be devastating, especially with a young football team. You know, they've made a lot of mistakes today, but they certainly have, you know, the fortitude to come back. They they've gone ahead, they've fallen behind, they've made mistakes, and yet they're at the 3-yard line now, going to the 2-point scores with a chance to win a football game that really could springboard them into a very successful season. And keep in mind, too, if this is successful, if this two-point conversion is successful, Villanova, with no timeouts remaining, 51 seconds remain. Here we go. Darrell Brown, the upback. Look at that. Higby, oh. the tight end in the backfield in front of Brown. He's in motion. It's going over the right side. The pitch to Coleman. He's in the end zone. But there's a flag on the play. Oh, and it's against Delaware. Now you got to kick it. Yeah. You want to refresh yeah. yourself yeah. with this <laughs> overtime rule, please? <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. This is wild. Well, there are obviously two flags. So there must have been some movement in the interior line. We have an illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty will repeat the try. Oh, there you go. Two, two men in motion. The tailback uh, kind of left, left a little early. I can't see the number. Who's in there? Uh, the Lewis tailback Coleman. for Delaware. Uh, Coleman was stacked up behind Brown, and in front of him was yep. Higby, the That's tight end. It was Coleman that moved. The tight end, you could have one, one player moving, and it was the tight end. But Coleman moves a little bit too soon, and the call was correct. Well, I do believe Sean Leach should be coming in. As Tubby wants an explanation, Delaware well, has been penalized nine times for 56 yards, but those last five, the most crucial of this ball game. They go from a win to a tie. No question that he moved. No, yeah, Tub, Tubby was concerned, wanted it to be explained to him, but uh, he will look at the film and review that and say, no question, Coleman was in motion, which put two players in motion. Five-yard penalty. And here's a clutch cool kick, Jaws, for a freshman. A true freshman. 18-year-old kid out of Ojai, California, Sean Leach. That is up. The kick is up and good. Whoa. Low snap, partially blocked, but got it through. Nice. Ugly but effective. Nice job by backup quarterback Mike DiMartino to get it down. Deion Jackson with the tip, but the kick by Leach is good. That's Leach. And how about his coach? What do you think Tubby Raymond's doing at this Ooh, moment? Baby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gotta love it. Well, Got to love it. Even if you're 67 years old, it's still exciting on Saturday afternoon. Well, this is one Tubby game Raymond. he certainly will be remembered by Tubby. The last tie in the Villanova-Delaware series was in 1976. It was tied at 24, but that predated the Yankee Conference sudden death rules. Oh, do we have to do them sudden death rules? Not yet. 51, 51 seconds. seconds. <laughs> Where's Jim at? Where's Jim? <laughs> Jim DiLorenzo, the sports information director, and Mike Flynn. 
We thank them also from Villanova, for Scott Selheimer and all his folks down at Delaware, our thanks as well. 51 seconds to be played here in the fourth quarter. Villanova 31, Delaware 31. And a majority of this crowd on their feet. Sean Leach made that clutch kick a moment ago. Kicks it away. Kyle Helton at his own five-yard line. Has a lane. Kyle Helton was a half a step away from breaking that one. Tom Marquise brings him out, the junior quarterback. Half a step and an ankle away. Mark Marquise, 12 of 22 for 202 yards in relief of Eric Pearson. Here's Helton's return. He hits the seam. There's the seam. He's got it. Good recovery by Delaware to close it up. Daryl George on the tackle. Marquise. Throw short for Calset. That'll stop the clock with 39 seconds remaining. Villanova with no timeouts. They've got to move the ball quickly, at least to get a field goal attempt. But the clock will stop on the a first down. down. Well, we know that much. It's the overtime that's going to kill us. <laughs> Kind of like the shootout yeah. inside. That's right. That's what it is. Marquise looking for Carter. Underwood in great position. <laughs> the ball in and out of the hands of Derek Underwood as Marquise is planted by Pat Mulhern. Well, Carter just does a good job of breaking it up. It should have been intercepted. You would think if Villanova would take that shot, they'd be looking at the 6'5 wide receiver, Brian Finneran, to throw that alley-oop for. But, of course, uh, look what Carter did in the, on his touchdown. He was the one that skied to get the touchdown reception. I played in a benefit basketball game for the Police Athletic League against Jeff Seidner and Mark McMillan a couple years ago. And although they're both about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, it was best. Seidner only about 5'6". The way they explode on their jump is just amazing. You know how, how wide outs go after the ball, even the little guys. You were probably still blocking their shots for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Full start, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Carter at 5'8", Hunt at 5'10". You would think, as, as Ron just suggested, they would look for the 6'5", Brian Finneran. But let's see what they do with 30 seconds remaining. Third and 15. Marquez from the shotgun. He's got Calcet. And Calcet has a first down. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Forgive me. I looked at the wrong marker. Fourth down now. 17 seconds remaining. Delaware wants him to punt it. Delaware calls timeout as Jeff Gardner makes the stop. Tubby wants to try and get the block on this punt. I, I think it's a good call. Take a shot at it. Break one loose. You know, you get a bad snap. Picker, or the punter drops the ball. Anything could happen. Give yourself an opportunity to try to win the ball game. I like the call. Well, these players are degree temperature. The humidity has got to be close to 100%. By the looks of our shirts up here, it's got to be close to that. And yet they're still just got to get out there kicking butt. I mean, you got to respect the effort they put forth. Clouds they got to go out there over. again. Yeah, that's right. Clouds have covered over the stadium here. It's a little cooler than it was at game time. But moist. It is very, very humid here at Villanova. Frank Venezia, ironically from Delaware, from the Wilmington area, averaging 43 yards in his five punts today. Venezia had better get this one off. Kenny Bailey in single safety, not very far at all, because they're coming. Delaware has gotten close to Venezia, but they have not gotten a block yet today. Cobalt, call signals. It's 
snap is solid and back. The kick is away. And Bailey backs off away from the ball. Delaware maybe have time for one play. Five seconds. Four seconds. Three. Ball whistled dead with two seconds here in the fourth quarter. Outstanding discipline by Villanova. Because they would have touched that ball quicker, would have gave Delaware some more time on the clock. There's a team that's well coached on the little nuances of the game that sometimes could mean the difference between winning and losing. 43 yards on the kick by Venezia. No return. And we return, unless this is a touchdown. Ron will explain the Yankee Conference overtime policy. We'll have a coin toss to see who gets possession. And then overtime. As Delaware decides, it's not worth the try. So as Jaws goes back to school, <laughs> to bone up on that Yankee Conference stuff. Here it is right here. This is the overtime policy. The team captains will be escorted to the center of the field. Okay. Keep working on it, Jaws. Now, Villanova working. 31, Delaware 31. That's it for regulation, but we're coming back with overtime. Time those Yankee Conference overtime rules. Ron Jaworski, take it away. You know, we've been here so long, I'm not sure what I'm going to say, but I do know one thing. When this game was kicked off, that tie was in style. Not anymore. We've been here a long time. We are going into overtime, and, and here are the uh, the conference overtime rules. Each team will get a shot at the 25-yard line. There is no sudden death, so the other team will get a chance to match that tie or try for the win. We'll be seeing that in a minute, but right now, let's go down the field to Bill Perry. All right, thank you, Ron. I cheated a little bit. I listened into a Villanova team meeting. They said uh, red zone touchdown end zone but as you mentioned if uh, Delaware would get three and Villanova would come back to three you know they do it again but if Delaware were to get three Villanova would get seven it would be over Villanova did say that if they win the flip they are going to elect to be on defense initially which I found interesting another thing the coach has said to him he said gentlemen this is what we live for <laughs> yeah lucky them here's the coin toss I'm gonna call it and the winner of the toss, he gets one of three options. Actually, two options. He can either go on offense, defense, or he can choose which end of the field we play. What other option that captain takes, the other one gets, which, uh, he gets his choice left. All right, Mr. Who's going to call it? Yeah. All right, you're going to call it. That's heads, that's tails. Oh call it near. Hey. Man called the heads. We've got a tails. Hey. You've won the toss. You want to be on defense. Yep. Gentlemen, that means you're going to be on offense, but you get to pick what end of the field we want to play. You want to play down here? All right. Now, you turn right here and face that goal. You guys are on defense, and you're here. So we have blue won the toss, and they elect to defend that goal. White will take the ball first down. All right, here we go. Good game. Good second game, anyway. <laughs> they played a pretty good football game. 31-31. Yeah. Delaware and Villanova in the overtime. You just heard what went on during the coin toss, as Bill Perry told you. Villanova elected to play defense, even though they won the toss. Darrell Brown called it. That's the one thing he's probably not done well all day. Right That's right. You know, I don't feel so bad after listening to that referee. <laughs> he seemed a little bit confused on, on the overtime rule. So, uh, but at least we got a little bit of a clarification. It's now showtime. This doesn't happen a lot. Delaware, one and three in overtime. Last time was November 21st of 1987. Villanova, two and oh in overtime. In their history, they beat Boston U, 31-24, in one overtime in 1988. And they beat UConn. 41-35, that's that sixth overtime oh, game goodness. in 1989. <laughs> I saved the best for last, didn't I? There's that scissors play. Coleman's got a touchdown on the first play. That didn't take very long, did it? Norman wow. Coleman, wow, a 25 yarder And Andy Pally is stunned. You'll see it right here. They run the scissors play. Total misdirection. Williams coming back underneath. Finds the seam. Good blocking downfield. First play, 25 yards in the overtime touchdown. Again, Villanova will get a chance to tie it. The point after is good. Sean Leach 
converts the point after. Now Villanova will put it in play from the 25 as well. The Villanova defense looking for Daryl Brown. They came back with the scissors and Norman, Norman Coleman scampers in from 25 yards out with a go-ahead score. I thought it was Pat Williams. They are both so quick. <laughs> well, number two and number three, about the same size. They run just about as fast as one another. And when you're keying on a big fullback, here's what Villanova has to do now. They've got to make up those seven points. Sippert on the first down carry. Shepard now replaces him. The Delaware defense stops him for no gain. Second down. And 10 to go at the 25. Villanova doesn't have to get in there. Right away, they can drive. They can get two first downs. Marquez to Finneran. Finneran down to about the 12-yard line. Kenny Bailey on the stop. First down. Ryan Finneran, the freshman from California, four catches, 75 yards. Marquez delivers it. First down, Villanova at the 12. Have to look at it from ground action, from ground level. Excuse me, 38-31 the score. Villanova with an opportunity to tie. Cal set over the right side. Nothing going. Gain of about one before he's pushed back. Tubby obviously very concerned, but very happy. He's got the lead. Now the, you know, the brunt of this is going to fall on his defense. Can they stop Villanova? Second down from the 11. Jeff Gardner leading the charge for the Blue Hens. Second down and nine. Dalbin and Finneran split to the bottom of your screen. Numbers 22 and 25. Marquez to Carter. Had it in his hands, but couldn't bring it down. The potential tying touchdown in and out of the hands of Rob Carter. Tubby readjust his hat. Wow, we'll see Marquez deliver. Good throw, got it, got it over the linebacker, catchable ball. Carter goes way up, tried to do what he did on his touchdown catch, come down with it, couldn't hold on to that one. Great effort, though. Third and nine. The fade pattern for Finneran, way out of bounds, and it'll bring up a fourth and nine. Villanova can get a first down at the two. The Delaware side of the field is up on their feet and cheering wildly. Andy Talley and the Villanova Wildcats face a fourth and nine. Do they try the alley-oop to Finneran again? They just tried it. Never gave Finneran a chance. Marquez threw the ball out of the end zone. You got to give the big guy a chance. He's going to throw the alley-oop. He's in the slot. And Carter spread to the right side. That's Finneran in motion. There's nobody on Finneran. He's wide. They try and set for Carter, and it's incomplete. Finneran came in motion. There was nobody covering Brian Finneran. The play, however, designed to the opposite side for Carter. And Delaware has beaten Villanova 38-31, Ron. Well, Carl, Delaware wins it on the scoreboard, but there are no losers this ball game. One terrific football game. Every player gave everything they had into the overtime. What an exciting football game. We joked about the Yankee Conference overtime scenario, but I'll tell you what, flat out, folks, that was a wonderful, wonderful way to finish a game as the coaches shake hands, both of them exhale, and Bill Perry is down on the field in the midst of it all. Bill? All right. Uh, Tubby Raymond just said to uh, Andy Talley, hell of a game, and then he looked at me and said, what do you want? I want to tell you this is a great football game, and in this rivalry, I wonder where this one ranks because it was truly a classic. Well, it's, it's a great college football game. You, you see the kids shaking hands. Uh, no game. That's a nice sight. No game could have been more intense. 
no one could want to win the ball game any more than the other. They had those turnovers and all kinds of things happen. Everybody hung in there. We tried to win the ball game with a, with a two-point conversion because I was afraid that everybody was tired. I figured, let's get it done now. You anticipated my next question. I was going to ask you, why go for two? Well, I, everybody's tired, and, and uh, they're, ti they're even tired from last week in that heat. And uh, I know everybody was dragging here, and I figured, hey, we've got a couple of good plays. Let's give it a shot and try to win it right now. I had heard, listening in on the sideline uh, from the Villanova side, that if they won the flip, they want to go on defense. So they won the flip, they went on defense. What about that call? You score a boom everybody from the 25. Does, everybody does that. I mean, you want to play defense first because then you know right. what you have to do offensively. You could kick a field goal, for example, if the other team didn't score. So your call there? You go in on the first play, that's a great call. Yeah, well, we worked. Yeah, we got a lot of guys with calls and practice. I don't even know who called it. Congratulations. Tubby Raymond, another victory. It was a magnificent uh, Saturday afternoon here at Villanova Stadium. About that call, that 25-yard touchdown run to win it, they'll throw it upstairs, and you will see it again. Gentlemen. All right, Phil, thank you very much. Thank you, Tubby. Again, thank you to Andy Talley. 38-31, and here is the play that won it for the Blue Hens. You see Williams, you see Brown, and the comeback to Coleman on their favorite scissors play. <laughs> Tubby, didn't even, Tubby didn't even know who called it. No defective. Doesn't matter. We'll be back to wrap things up here at Villanova. There's the final score. We'll be back one final time.